maybe Lee, maybe. Okay, let me see this. Four, five, two. I guess I'll, I'll, I'll call upon them. Uh, we are recording and we are live on YouTube right now. So let me let me check on, on this number. Hi, uh, phone number ending in 452. Do you hear me? If you do unmute. Maybe Lee, maybe? If you're Lee Jameson, okay. please unmute. Oh, Lee? 452. Oh, hold on. I'm, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll call upon them. Uh, we are recording and we are live on YouTube right now. So let me let me check on, on this number. Uh -huh. Okay, I don't hear a response from 452. So we're going to move forward. And doing one last check. Okay, let's move forward. Just call the time. Time is 7.06 p.m. Thank you. And let's do roll call. All right, Colby. I'm here. Catherine. Here. Arthur. Here. Uh, I'm here, Robin. Nick. Here. Uh, Ren. Here. Fred. Here. Thank you. Uh, Lee. Lee. Lee Jameson. Nope. We're going to move on. Susanna. Nope. Okay, I'm going to put excused for the moment. Paige. Here. Tess. Here. Kevin. Here. Sean. Here. And Jake is excused. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's also, I, I think you forgot about me, Robin. I'm a little hurt about that. Lee, who is saying that? Fred. I'm sorry, Fred. Oh, Fred. Oh, no. no, no How Matt. is it that I always, Fred, I am so sorry. No, no you I, got I, me. You forgot Matt. You got me. Yes, Matt. I think Matt. Yes, oh, Matt. Matt, I didn't call your name Matt, but I did mark you here. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Matt is here. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve in attendance from the board. And we have twelve in attendance from the public. All right, cool. Thank, thank you, Robert. Um, some sad news. Um, this past week, Jay Goldberg passed away. Uh, Jay, as you probably know, is a, um, a pillar of our society and of our community. He, he served uh, obviously on a neighborhood watch for many, many years, our grievance committee here in GTLNC and on our public safety committee at GTLNC. Uh, I'm a relative newcomer to this board. Um, so I'd like to hand it off to Ren for a, a moment or two just to, to reflect upon Jay and, and his contributions. Uh, thank you, Colby. Uh, Jay was a, uh, a very strong uh, a supporter at the beginning of the creation of neighborhood councils. Uh, he was active in Neighborhood Watch and a variety of other activities in the community. And so when the uh, neighborhood council idea was first being uh, put around, uh, he helped organize uh, a variety of people in the community to uh, to become active. His uh, strongest interest was in uh, public safety and uh, the uh, neighborhood watch program. And so he was very active in that. Um, and he also uh, served on the, uh, on the board uh, for a, a long number of years on uh, uh, complaints <laughs> and uh, problems on the board. He was uh, uh, on our uh, three-man, uh, three-person committee to uh, oversee complaints and uh, try and resolve those at our level. And uh, we had a number at the very beginning through the first few years. And then after that, uh, everything got uh, very quiet and uh, uh, <laughs> neither Jay nor uh, the other two members were called on to uh, uh, <laughs> hear uh, complaints and, and try and uh, come to a, a recommendation to the board. So anyway, I think we need to uh, take a moment to recognize Jay and thank him for uh, uh, now that he's passed, uh, just remember him one more time to, for all the work he's done for us. And uh, 
just to let you all know, uh, his wife Trudy is uh, still living in the house there, uh, corner of uh, Moore Park and Foreman. And uh, so I think uh, they've asked uh, that uh, in lieu of flowers, uh, uh, don <coughs> pardon me, donations to the Valley Family Center, American Center, uh, American Cancer Society, and curehht.org. So any of those three uh, would be appropriate. Anyway, thank you, uh, Colby, for giving me a chance to talk about Jay. No, it's, it's my pleasure. And, and I'd like to invite anyone else if they have a, a quick uh, you know, moment to reflect upon, upon Jay, anyone from uh, the board or, or stakeholders. <clears throat> Raise your hand. Yeah, I test. Yeah, Colby, I didn't prepare remarks, but I heard about Jay's passing a couple of days ago from Alice Roth, and he was really, truly lovely. My first uh, interaction with the Neighborhood Council was by way of the Public Safety Committee, and he's just really a giant in terms of uh, community, community public safety, just a mensch and wise and considered and thoughtful and someone to whom we should all look up. And I was very glad that he came uh, to a tribute that we, um, that we uh, produced several months ago for another fellow by the name of Harry Flynn and were able to acknowledge Jay Goldberg and his wife Trudy at that event um, a bit as well. So my condolences to the family. And for those of you who didn't know Jay Goldberg, he was a really very fine gentleman and he will be missed. Thank you. Thank you, Tess, for that. And I also wanted to say um, that Jay was an amazing uh, community member and leader in many capacities, not just neighborhood council, but um, just in, in every way possible. And uh, Jay actually attended um, January public safety meetings. So this came as a, not necessarily a surprise, but more of a shock because he, you know, he still was serving our community even, even as recently as last month. So um, we will miss Jay. He's a wonderful man. His family is truly, we're so lucky to have them in the community. And I had the pleasure of speaking with him just last fall about um, our grievance committee. And again, he was, he was helpful and, and spry and, and energetic. Um, and, uh, you know, he's a great role model uh, for all of us uh, to follow. Um, with that being said, if anyone else has anything else, let me know now or we'll, we'll move forward. Okay, we'll go into open public forum. Um, please raise your hand um, if you'd like to, to say something. You have three minutes uh, for each, each speaker at this time. I see Jonathan Gregory. He has his hand up first. I think um, I'm, I've already changed in my head what I'd like to say. Um, thank you for that tribute. Jay Goldberg was a, a name that was a fixture in the life of Toluca Lake ever since I came to Los Angeles. I never met him, but I knew his name even without knowing him. So that was a man who, who changed things for the good by his participation. In any case, um, what I'd like to take a moment to tell you is how important I think the Neighborhood Council is more than for any other reason that the individual voice of a stakeholder really isn't heard by the local government anymore. I know that firsthand and that's why I turned to the neighborhood council. So whether or not you know how important, feel how important what you're doing is, I'm taking a moment to tell you that it is important. And this week I saw how important it was when several stakeholders by way of forms, by paperwork, have asked about walls around their property. I, I tried to speak in that meeting, but for whatever the reason, the technical reason, my hand wasn't recognized. It was in the club meeting last night. And I wanted to let you know that one of the applicants actually talked about their need for security. Times are changing. Nobody builds walls because they want to, because they're expensive and no one really loves them, but um, they're looking to you for help when they apply for a wall because people have to feel safe and our community has things going on that until we get to the bottom of it, until we change some of the policies, social and economic, that I'm looking to you for um, collaboration with to get changed, we have to help people through this and that's their need for security. Um, I wanted to tell you also 
democracy is a big deal, even though we have the privilege of relegating it to second seat. Um, we enjoy it here in this country, and we've backslided. We we back we we made a backslide, and tonight there's 150,000 troops on the Ukraine, and for no other reason. There's a lot of reasons, but fundamentally, it's they're after democracy and the economics of democracy. Um, my family came out of there, and the ones that didn't are at the bottom of mass graves. So it really is important, democracy. And when we backslide on it, that's trouble. Uh, a representative um, council is what this is supposed to be. I have enormous confidence in Colby as the president. I don't think all of you know that, but I do. I think he's an en enormously successful and it's enormously unfair of the bylaws to hold him accountable for everything that doesn't happen. That ought to be all of the board members. Um, but I enormously like Colby and I think he's doing a very good job at leading the neighborhood council because we have some extreme voices and he's doing a good balancing act. Thank you very much. I know there's 12 other people, thanks. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, I'm looking for other hands raised. I know, I know uh, Teresa, yeah, there you are. Hi, Teresa. I mean, you can unmute. Colby, could you also uh, uh, let Susanna Hazen? She's joined the meeting. It okay, is I'll look for her. 717. Okay. Let me... Teresa, do you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. okay great, great. We have uh, three minutes for the public comment. I know you wanted to talk about, I think, about the, air, the airport, airport noise. We. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. I. Um... When the council first started, I was a council member. That's way back when. Uh, we did a lot of good work, and um, I've dropped away from the Toluca Lake Neighborhood Council. We started our own homer, homeowners association, Toluca Terrace. Um, um, but we, we're finding we need support. Um, we're a small homeowners association and we just don't have the power or the pull that you guys do. So um, I'm, I'm looking for some guidance and su support. Um, the uh, Burbank Airport uh, seems to be just wild in, uh, in its expansion and its plans for expansion, and no one seems to be able to control them at all. And I wanted to know if anyone on, the, on your council is, is working on that. Um, um, during public comment, I'm not really supposed to have a back and forth dialogue, but but um, answer your question very, very briefly. No, we haven't received um, complaints about that. But, but we should take this offline and let's discuss this um, so we can have an open dialogue between between you and I. Um, but now is actually just a public forum. We just oh, okay, uh, okay. Then, then I'll continue on. Um, way back when, when Tom Labonge was alive, we worked with him a lot. And um, at one point in time, Tom Labonge was caught in, uh, in quite a trap. Uh, he was under a lot of pressure from Burbank to sell or lease property that was across the way from the Burbank airport to facilitate the jumbo jets that Burbank airport wanted to bring in. Well, Tom knew that would be disastrous for our valley, and but he... So he, anyway, he came to one of our homeowners meetings and told us uh, what was going on, knowing that we would go right to the press and expose the situation. Indeed, we did, and it was stopped. Tom LeBonge was very grateful that we got him off the hot seat and um, stopped it. So in the same vein, uh, we find now that the uh, I'll have more specific information as to what they're up to as I'm waiting to to talk with uh, Dr. Dave Gordon, who was a council person in Burbank for some time, and he's very knowledgeable about the Burbank uh, steps. But currently, uh, that's what we're doing. So th that's about all I have to say. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you, Teresa. And feel free to reach out to me through email or give my phone number on the emails that we were exchanging. Okay, Colby. All right, I appreciate that. Thank you. 
and thank you for your service uh, when you were on the board years ago. Um, I see we have a hand up. Yes. Yes, Colby, um, quick uh, item for Dr. Teresa Karam. If you could contact me off offline, Dr. Karam, I'm in touch with some people who've been active in making changes with respect to the Van Nuys Airport. And I think their strategy could be applied here. And you're not the only one bothered by the Burbank Airport noise. So test.taylor at gtlnc.org. And I'd be happy to talk to you about that. Okay, great. I, I will contact you. Thank you. Th Thank you. All right, I'm looking for more hands in open public forum. I don't see any. If I don't see any, we're gonna move on to uh, city neighborhood news and announcements, um, which we will do. Um, we have a special guest tonight. We have assist, uh, assessor Jeff, Jeffrey Prang. And I was told by his assistant that this is his first neighborhood council meeting. Um, the assessor is a graduate of Michigan State University. He was the uh, council member for the city of West Hollywood, including four terms of, of, as mayor uh, of the city of West Hollywood. Um, and he oversees a tax assessment role of $17 billion annually in the city of Los Angeles. Uh, so it's, um, with that, I'd like to welcome him. I think, um, I believe you are unmuted. I'm unmuted. Is you hear me yes. okay? Yes. Oh, there you are. Great. Thank, thank you for joining us uh, today, Assessor. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Colby, and thank you to the entire board for allowing me to uh, come and spend a few minutes with you today. Um, you know, the Assessor is one of the more obscure offices uh, in, in the county, and uh, we know that neighborhood councils are an important place of a source of information for the community, and I thought it'd be helpful if I introduced my office and some of the services that we provide. Uh, tell you a little bit about what's going on in the market in your area might be useful information for all of you who are leaders in the community. Plus, um, I know that you wanted to have an exhilarating meeting and what better way to liven things up than a talk from the county property tax assessor. <laughs> so those who are unfamiliar with my office, I'm one of three countywide elected officials. The other two are the sheriff and the district attorney. And I administer a department of about 1,300 employees located in six offices throughout the county. Um, I also want to clarify that I'm not the guy who collects taxes. Almost everybody thinks that I do that. That's one thing I don't do. The other guy, the guy who does collect taxes has a very uh, intuitive title. He's called the tax collector. Um, as the assessor, I'm responsible for uh, valuing all taxable property in the county, which includes land and improvements as well as business uh, property, um, which includes things such as furniture, equipment, and machinery as well as aircraft, mobile homes, boats, and even racehorses. That being said, I oversee the largest property assessment agency in the United States, We're responsible for valuing over two and a half million real property parcels and business assessments annually, which uh, um, I'll get to in just a second. The, um, the primary job of the assessor is the production of the annual assessment role, which is really just an essential way of saying the inventory of all taxable property. The assessment role serves as an important planning document for local governments. They use this to prepare their budgets and anticipation of property tax revenues. I'm hearing from the city of LA quite a bit this time of year, what's trying to get an idea of where property tax uh, uh, rates will, uh, volume will be. Um, and the assessment role also serves as an important economic indicator, getting some insight as to health of the local real estate market. This year, the assessment role grew um, for the 11th consecutive year countywide uh, by over $63 billion, a 3.7% increase for the county over the previous year. Uh, and the total assessed value for all property in LA County for 2021 was more than $1.7 trillion. And that generated $17 billion in property tax revenue, which is allocated to cities, school districts, and is used to pay for things such as roads, hospitals, public safety, libraries, Etc. the public services that we all rely on. Uh, to give you an idea of uh, what's going on in, uh, unfortunately I wasn't able to break it down by a, 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 a micro targeting area. I can tell you what's going on in the city of LA. Um, and there's a chart here that shows that, uh, as you can see that uh, uh, property value growth in the city of LA was a little bit higher than the county. Um, total assessed value of all property in the city of uh, LA was about $723 billion. That's just the assessed value. The market value is probably considerably higher. 
Um, so it's probably no news to you that the housing market in LA County experienced some record highs during COVID, somewhat counterintuitive given the pandemic, uh, but housing prices increased so much that million dollar homes have become the norm in a number of areas, uh, while other areas of the county have witnessed all time high transactions. Uh, last month, the median sales price for a property in the area rose to $1.25 million. That's an increase of over 30% the same time last year, staggering increase. Um, according to our data, data, we anticipate that prices will remain high, although we're not, we don't think that the steep increases will continue uh, this, this next year. Um, the, um, you can see some of the neighboring cities, or neighboring communities to uh, Toluca Lake, Studio City, um, north of the river, Studio City, south of the river, that the uh, median sales price of a home is well over a million dollars. Um, that one statistic there that shows that Studio City, south of Valley River had a, a negative growth is probably not something to suggest the property values are going down there. That probably just has to do with the number and nature of transactions that took place. Um, one other thing I wanted to talk about very, very briefly it deals with Proposition 19. This was a measure that was passed by the voters back in 2020. If you're not familiar with Prop 19, it has two major components. First, it allowed homeowners who are over 55 years of, of age or disabled or victims of a natural disaster to transfer their property tax base with them when they sell their home and buy a new one. So if you're 55 and you bought your home, in 1994, $100,000, you could take that $100,000 tax base with you if you buy a new home anywhere in the state. Um, there's another part of Prop 19 that's causing a lot of consternation. Uh, this part was not talked about very much during the campaign. And this deals with intergener intergenerational transfers or parent to child or grandparent to grandchild uh, inheritance issues. Prop 19 greatly rolled back tax benefits uh, for uh, family inheritance and um, you can still inherit the property, but the, tax, the preferential tax base that used to be able to benefit from has been greatly reduced. There's a measure being circulated to restore those family benefits. And you may hear the slogan uh, uh, over the course of the next month to roll back the, the death tax. Um, another issue before I conclude uh, that I wanted to uh, discuss, I always like to remind local leaders about the homeowner's exemption one of the things my program, my department does um, is we manage a number of the property tax savings programs. And among those programs uh, for seniors, veterans, the disabled, nonprofits is the homeowner's exemption. And what this does is it allows me to reduce your property assessment annually by seven, $7,000, which will save you about 70 bucks on your annual property tax. If you own your home um, and occupy it as your principal residence as of January 1st, you are automatically eligible for this exemption. The deadline to um, receive the full exemption um, annually is, uh, is today, actually. It's the uh, February 15th. Uh, you'll get a partial um, uh, exemption if you apply after this. It's a one-time only application. Savings are new automatically every year. Uh, I bring this up because we estimate that about a third of all homeowners in LA County fail to apply for this exemption, primarily because they simply don't know about it. So I'm glad to have the opportunity to speak with you today and share this information. Um, so in conclusion, I just wanna let you know that we've created an array of resources um, that are available for, um, uh, for property owners. Uh, anything that you might need, any questions you might have about your property or other properties in the community, it's, it's available on, what we, on our website, which is a very robust and informative website. Um, we also have a, a lot of details available on our annual report, which is also available on our website. And I did want to encourage you all to uh, uh, subscribe to our very informative monthly newsletter, which uh, is a must read for anybody who owns property in uh, LA County. And I promise you, we won't spam you with all types of political junk, but just good information about uh, owning property and saving money on taxes in, uh, in LA County. Um, this is my, uh, my email and phone number and contact information. And uh, if anybody ever has any questions, you can reach me uh, which we hear. Thank you, Assessor Branch. It's, uh, it's, I'm so impressed that you came on and, and you're, you're talking to us directly. I mean, you're going to hit all 98 other neighborhood councils. Um, it's, it's very, very impressive. Um, yeah, Prop 19 kind of threw me for a loop also. When I read the details after it was uh, voted in, um, it was, uh, I felt a little, well, I won't get into it, but I see Tess Taylor has a hand up. 
Are you, you're able to take questions, aren't you, Assessor? Sure, absolutely. Okay. Yes, uh, thank you. Very quickly, I, uh, I've i noticed your emails in my inbox, Mr. Prang, so you're very proactive and I appreciate that. Thank you for this. Number one, I would like to be able to get a copy of this, of your PowerPoint presentation. If I email you, may I get that from you? Absolutely. And number two, thank you. Um, does your office do any projections with respect to um, revenues anticipated from the passage of bills like SB9 and SB10 uh, and the uh, the anticipated increased revenue from property taxes. Do you do we, any projections on that? We don't because my my office technically is not a revenue office. Our job, okay. we're, we're real estate appraisers. So we will ascertain what we think the increase in uh, in assessed value will be. The, uh, the projections probably, um, property taxes is probably a combination of the auditor controller, the treasurer tax collector and the chief executive office. Um, hard, to hard to tell what will happen with uh, SB, uh, SB 9. I suspect that if single, I apologize for my dog is uh, barking in the background, um, but I, we, I suspect if people are to split their lots uh, as they're allowed to do under SB 9, if they uh, add additional units, there may be uh, additional tax revenues that will be generated. By that. Hey. Um, but I don't, it's impossible to tell at this point uh, what the potential revenue will be as this, the way that we do projections is by looking backward. We look at what type of transactions took place and we try to extrapolate what the trend will be going forward. But since there is no information to look back on at this point, uh, we don't really have a benchmark to, uh, to, to guess. We'll need another year or two before we can begin to- That's, uh, that's, that's good. Um, bonus question, what kind of dog do you have? A Pomeranian. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Thank you. I, I guess I'll, I'll follow up with Tess is um, with the lot splitting with SB9 and presumably SB10, which would subdivide them even more. Do you see there being reassessments for the lots that you, you mean? I mean, would, would the other lots be reassessed at the current value? Do you think? So the, um, the, the basic principle is that, that if the same owner is splitting the lot, the current assessment will be divided between the two lots. So it'll be more or less the same um, assessment for the total parcel. But there will be changes because if you're going to put uh, additional units, adding bathrooms, baths, rooms that weren't there, any new construction uh, will result in a reassessment of that new construction. The other thing to keep in mind is all the direct ass assessments, things like sewer, metro charges, school charges, those will now be applied to each of the separate parcels if you do a lot split. Mm -hmm. So there could be, um, well, there may be a revenue uh, uh, opportunity. There could also be uh, uh, additional tax burdens. Okay, that makes sense. Any other questions for Assessor Prang from uh, either our our board or, or it stakeholders? Looks like, it looks like Paige is asking. Oh, I don't yeah, oh, I have a Quick question. I uh, went on the website um, and looked at the forms. It looks like it's form BOE226. Is that the correct form to fill out if people want to file for the, the property uh, tax exemption that you mentioned? So the, uh, no, the homeowners, homeowners exemption Sorry. on our yes. website, <clears throat> there is a, a tax savings tab and it should just say homeowners exemption on it. Um, okay. Robert, is there a BOE number attached to that? There is. I'm not sure of the exact number, but it should at the top of the form say homeowner claim for homeowners yeah. exemption. The, the, the Board of Equalization has numbers, but we, we use our own designation on that. We just call it the homeowners exemption. It's in big headlines on it. Got it. Great. Well, thank you so much. I think that that answers all our questions for now, but I'm glad we have a direct line to your email and um, and I'm sure we'll be in touch. Uh, so thank you so much for inviting me so much. to be here. Tonight. Thank you thank for you. your time. And thank you, El Cid. I've been, I've been talking to, to El Cid all week about this, and I'm, I'm very excited about having you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good night, all. Good evening. Thank you. Next up, we're going to go to Officer Officer Delbar. Um, let's see if he's here. Yeah, I believe he is. Hey, everybody. Hi, Officer Delbar. How are you? Hey, you guys. How are you guys doing? Great. Great to have you on. Sorry, I've been missing in action for a little bit. Uh, the Super Bowl is uh, they're sending us everywhere for this thing. All over the city. We did a good job. It was a very peaceful Super Bowl, and uh, I'm very happy everything went off uh, perfectly. It looks at least from our, our perspective. And Curtis, did you know Jay Goldberg? 
Did you know? Yeah, him? I, I knew Jay pretty well actually, and um, I heard about this, and it was it was heartfelt. It was hard, hard to hear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've had many conversations with Jay and his wife, and there, those people will be remembered for a long, 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 long time. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. So tomorrow there's another uh Super Bowl parade going on, I believe. So I'll be sent to that as well. So I'll be out of commission tomorrow as well. It's Do you know what time week. the parade is? I, I think it's around 11, I think. I was going to look it up That's online. That's what probably. I read. It, it starts at 11. It starts at 11. At the uh, Shrine Auditorium goes up uh, Figueroa to the uh, Coliseum. Shrine to the Coliseum. At 11.45. Yeah, that's if everything goes as planned. So we'll see how that day goes. <laughs> Hopefully it's peaceful, fun. Hope it maintain or remains that way. We'll see that. <laughs> um, so I'll jump into a few statistics real quick. <clears throat> so our robberies are actually down about 14%. Our, however, our aggravated assaults are up about 60%. That's six zero. Our burglaries are down 35%. Our grand theft autos are up 11%. Our burglary from motor vehicles are down about 27%. And our thefts are up about 44%. Which kind of brings me to my next point about some of the grand theft autos. I was looking on the map for uh, January, the month of January, and I saw some grand theft autos in West Luga Lake actually occurring a little more frequently. There's a few more of those that I'm seeing pop up. So just to reiterate, uh, please don't leave your keys in your cars. Please, please try and lock your cars and don't leave anything inside your cars. Uh, I've also been hearing through some neighbors of uh, and emails of checking door handles. And they'll check a bunch of door handles over and over and over again, and they're going to find one that's open. So let's not try and be that one person that left their door handle open. And um, hopefully we can minimize that and don't leave anything in your cars because it takes about 10 seconds to break a window and take whatever's in that car. Uh, and then to some other material, uh, you guys had questioned me about the incident in front of Miss Robinson's. This occurred a while ago now, um, especially now. So I was speaking to our detectives about it. They're still investigating it. They're open to anything or any information that they can to try and help with identifying the people involved. Uh, if you or anyone you know knows anyone, please let me know. And I'll forward that information to our detectives uh, as soon as possible. And then the incident on Violet and Sarah, I saw that uh, Tess had uh, put out a uh, news article about it. And from what I can understand, there is a suspect in custody. Um, and we're waiting to see what the next step is uh, for that individual. But um, that, oh, the last thing I wanted to mention that I, re- I remembered. Uh, if you should come across a crime and you wish to report it, say it's a theft of your car or materials in your car or some personal item that you have, please don't hesitate to report that at lapd.org for online reporting. It minimizes you waiting. You don't have to wait for the police to come and, um, and do that report for you. You can just do it online, and it's pretty quick and simple. Other than that, that's all I have to report for now. Uh, thank you, Curtis. I have a quick question about that reporting, online reporting you mentioned. Is that the same as a police report or because a lot of times an insurance company will require a, a police report. So, yeah, that is exactly the same as a police report. They'll give you a reference number. And those reports are still um, investigated by our detectives. It's just a different way to report the, uh, the uh, crime. So you're, you can give your insurance company the ID number or the reference number for that report. And that should be, should be sufficient for them. Thank you, Curtis. Any other questions for Officer Delbar from the board or from stakeholders? Uh, Officer okay. Delbar, whatever happened with that woman who got punched in the face in front of Sharkies? That was the biggest, that was the most terrifying one that I've all, and I never heard a follow-up for that one. Yeah, that was a little bit ago, and they are still uh, working on it. I believe she was actually, the suspect was actually caught on that one. Oh, good. Good, good. Day, I believe, is actually what happened. And then are you seeing... I mean, I, you know, I, I always love to listen to LAPD hand ring about how nobody's getting prosecuted. Do you find that to be the, the, the actual case or is that just depending on what what news organization they're watching at night? 
Uh, prosecution always depends on the crime, past history. Um, we are seeing a little bit of both sometimes, and we're seeing mixed whether they get prosecuted or not. So it does depend on what source you are using uh, to investigate some of these uh, items. I've had complaints. I've had some complaints from stakeholders where they will report a crime. They'll have LAPD come out and then LAPD will say, well, Gascon won't prosecute it, so I'm not going to arrest them. And that it does not sound like the option of an LAPD officer to make. I don't like it. And when I hear it, it makes me want to tell stakeholders to call me as soon as that happens and have me come over and I'll talk to that officer because the officer is not there to make an evaluation as to whether or not Gascon is going to prosecute. They're there to enforce the law as it's written. Whether or not Gascon is going to do that is a different thing. And so when I hear LAPD officers say, oh, well, I'm not going to arrest them because it's not going to get charged. I don't care. It's not your job. Your job is to arrest somebody who's acting in a way that we don't as a society are accepting. And so when I hear LAPD officers say that to our stakeholders, man, nothing makes me crazier because it's, that's not their decision to make. And so it's, it's like they sit there and they, and they have this self-perpetuating, I, I don't want to get too much into the politics of it, but at the end of the day, if a stakeholder sees somebody violating the law, that officer is there to arrest the person, correct? And then whether or not that gets prosecuted is for the DA to, to, to assess, correct? So the officer's job is public safety, and our job is to develop probable cause for that arrest. Right. Whether it gets prosecuted or not is beyond our control, but we just have the probable cause for the arrest. Right. So this is a conversation that I want to have with some LAPD officers, because I don't ever want to hear that again. I don't ever okay. want to hear somebody get assaulted, and then it, it turns into you know, we're not going to prosecute. So we're not going to arrest somebody. Cause I, I, I mean, I, that is a, that is a big stain on LAPD, you know, and it makes people feel not safe. So anyway, I would love to talk to you further about it. I, I guess we don't have time for this, but um, I would like to talk to you further about it in specific instances that come up. I'll definitely contact you, but thank you for that. Yes. Thank you, Nick. Mm -hmm. I see Tess Taylor. Hi Tess. Oh, you're on mute. Tess. Yeah, sorry. Thank you, Officer Delbar. Um, if you saw my news item, then you probably know that um, Jay, uh, Detective Jay Haggis has taken over from Detective Ayala on the homicide, and That's we're correct. glad that suspect is, suspect is in, in custody. Do you have any further information about that, or would that come directly from Detective Haggis? Yeah, that information would come directly from the investigating officer, which is Detective Haggis, and you're right, he did take it over from Detective Ayala. All right. Very good. Thank you. Thanks, Tess. Um, I'm looking for more questions for Officer Delbar uh, from stakeholders also. I don't see any hands raised, so I, we will release Officer Delbar uh, so he can go out and, and keep us safe. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Curtis. I really appreciate your time. Thank you, everybody. We'll, uh, Have a good night. Okay, good night. Thank you so much. Next up, uh, we'll do Eric uh, Gibson. And Erica. Oh, I see someone had their hand. Hold on a second. Yeah, there we go. Thank you, Mr. President. Good evening, everybody. Um, happy Tuesday, good folks. Hope you guys are doing well today. So just wanted to touch base um, and introduce my supervisor, Tom, soon. If you, uh, Mr. President, if you'd not be so kind to unmute him. Yes. Uh, hello, board members. This is uh, Tom Soon from the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment. Uh, I, see, I think I see some familiar faces here. I think, Robin, I think I've seen you. I oh, know, first of all, I've seen you, but I've, I've seen your name in our trainings, et cetera. I think, Tess, you too. I think we've think we, we conversed before. And then, Pete, hello. Like, Hello, hello. And Nick Baker you know, reminding us of Super Bowl champions of Super, Bowl, Super Bowl's past. Okay. And uh, I would not. I'm not going to sit here and say I'm a Rams fan, but congratulations, congratulations, go Los Angeles. Nick and I, we do have a common enemy. I'm not going to say my team is, but look at that, our common enemy I is bet Dallas. You Cowboys. don't like Dallas. Exactly. Uh, yeah. There we go. Maybe, okay, sorry, sorry. Maybe. What's the difference? Not, what do you always ask a Dallas Cowboy fan? Where's he from? I know. That's what I did. We'll, we'll, we'll go forward. Okay. Let's go forward. You know, um, so just a little background. You must, most of you know Gibson as your direct neighborhood, accounts, neighborhood empowerment advocate. Um, I'm the director of engagement and awareness, and I've been with the department for 
for many years now. And as you talk about, you know, and thank you for the acknowledgement for Jay Goldberg. I still have it. I was looking up at past emails and I had an email from Jay back in 2012 when he was part of your uh, public safety committee, you know? So, yeah. So thank you just for the acknowledgement. And we always, you know, and don't fortunate this happens to our leader you know, as we go through the system, right? And this this happens, but just thank you for the acknowledgement. And then that's very kind, kind words of it. And we, they, our department brings us sympathies as well. Um, so I'm here today to um, to just you know, thank the board for all the work that you've done. And I see a lot of new faces with new board members. And then just also to uh, say some sad news, but some good news too. Sad in the sense of, I just want to acknowledge Gibson and Burra for being the direct neighborhood support your neighbor, neighborhood empowerment advocate uh, for your council. Um, he's not going anywhere. He's still with our department, um, but, we, but uh, we, we are having some transitions. Uh, most of you got my emails that we did bring um, from November to until um, thinking to January. We brought up six new neighborhood empowerment advocates, which is great news for the system, which means that the ratio before one neighborhood empowerment advocate would oversee like maybe nine or even 10 neighborhood councils. Now the ratio is down to one to seven. So I do want to acknowledge, you know, Gibson, you know, he's our chief equity officer. You know, he'll, you'll see him in, in different projects and different workshops, et cetera. So Gibson, thank you so much for supporting this council and, um, and, and for, your, for your great work. Um, I'll still be the main director uh, kind of overseeing this, the, the council, so overseeing 33 neighborhood councils. But I'm here also to introduce, um, she came to us a couple of months ago, which means she's, we, 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 with the new NEAs, uh, we, we, we made sure that they're having a, a, a good onboarding process before we um, bring them to your neighborhood councils. Um, so then I, I do want to introduce now, she's here with us, your new neighborhood empowerment advocate, Erica Gatika, if you are here. So I just want to introduce her. Um, a lot of great experience. I'll just let have her experience. We're very excited to have Erica. Great experience in civic engagement. And I'll just have her kind of just let, take it from here and introduce herself too. Erica, are you here? I'm here. Thank you, Thomas. And hello, everyone. As mentioned, my name is Erica Gatika, and I'm the new Neighborhood Empowerment Advocate. Um, I'm very excited to be here as a proactive uh, commun community member myself. I very much appreciate all the work that the NC system does, and I look forward to supporting this NC and utilizing its resources not only to uplift constituents, but the community as a whole. If you need to contact me directly, you can reach me via email. My email is erica, E-R-I-C-A dot gatika, G-A-T-I-C-A at lacity.org. Um, on that note, I'll say that um, I did send you all an email last week, just providing you a few updates for this month. So I won't get into all of that today, um, but I'll start by just reading off a statement of, uh, for the conflict of interest to remind you all. So um, any board member who may have a conflict of interest and has not consulted with the office of the city attorney should move to have the matter tabled until the next meeting so that the board member has an opportunity to consult with the city attorney's office. If the board declines to table the matter, the board member may want to consider recusal prior to the matter being discussed. If choosing to recuse, the board member should state for the record all reasons for the recusal and that they will be leaving the meeting during the discussion and voting. Because recusal may not always be sufficient, tabling of the matter at issue is always preferred to allow time for the board member to consult with the city attorney's office. Um, so again, if you guys have any questions, concerns, you know, I'll be here throughout the meeting and for future meetings, feel free to reach out. Thank you. Thank you, Erica. Um, Erica, do you have a, a telephone number as well? Yes, I do. So let's see. So my work cell number is 213-978-1676. And can you receive texts at that as well? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, Erica. So Gibson or, or Thomas, should I, should I direct further questions to Erica for now on? Yes, you give you, you, uh, you, she'll be your main direct neighborhood council support. And then if you need some follow up, you, know, you, you can always include me as well, but she will be your main first direct line of support. Thank you. Okay, very good, very good. I, I had a pleasure uh, speaking with her last week. 
Thank um, you. And it's uh, it's great. You know, you'll be hearing from me a lot. I have a lot of questions. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Well, thank you, Erica, and thank you, Gibson and Thomas. Um, any other questions or comments from our stakeholders or board members? If not, we'll move on. We have a busy. Yes. Teresa. You're muted still. Okay, there we go. Um, I, I'm a little confused as to um, what, how Erica supports the stakeholders. Um, for example, if there's something going on with a corporation that's violating the law, is Erica the person to turn to? Erica, do you want to answer that, or would you like me to go ahead? Or Gibson or Thomas? I, I She's eventually the, the first line. Um, whenever, go ahead, go ahead, Tom. Right. The, the, uh, Erica is the neighborhood empowerment advocate from our department, and our deport, department supports the neighborhood councils. So our so we'll support the the board members, you know, with um, with support, and and then and and, and we'll, we'll we'll support the board and how they work with the stakeholders. So that's how. Yeah, yeah I know, but I'm not understanding what support, uh, what that means. What does it mean? That, that could range from providing technical assistance to the board members. You know, if there's legal, if there's legal issues, we put them in touch with the city attorney. If there's funding issues, we put them in touch with the city clerk's funding division. If there's uh, operational, operational matters that we we work with the board on. Oh, okay. All right, good. That's what I wanted to know. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Okay, well, thank you, Thomas, again. And I think that wraps up. Um, uh, done. Um, thank you again. And, and Erica, I'll, I'll be, you'll hear from me uh, probably at least once every two or three days. And Gibson, thank you so much for all your, your support uh, these past several months. Yes, Gibson, thank you so much. And welcome to Erica and Tom. Thank you so much for all your support. We sometimes need you. So we really appreciate it. You got Moving it. Moving on to... Let's see more uh, news and announcements. I'm looking at. I don't see. List. I Pretty don't big. see any other. If they are, if somebody else from the list of news and announcement organizations, can you please raise your hand? I, I don't, see, don't anybody. see anybody. So okay. I think maybe we'll just move on. We'll move on to GTLNC committee reports, and we're going to do a little shuffle here. Um, we're going to do um, GAC first because GAC will take the longest and. I think we want to stay fresh for these important decisions and votes uh, possibly uh, this evening. So, Catherine? Wait, excuse me. We did not. Oh, what do we do? Should we do the minutes it. first? Oh, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. We didn't do the minutes? Oh, you're right. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> I, I don't know how we. we <laughs> I oh, was you know, we going right to, to Jay Goldberg. Yeah. I think that, that got me distracted. Yeah. Okay. okay. We are going to vote motion A to approve the GTLNC January 18th, 2022 general board minutes. Do I have a first? Catherine, first. Ah, thank you, Catherine. Do I have a second? Second. Who was that? Kevin. Kevin, thank you, Kevin. Uh, any discussion on the minutes? Uh, yeah, Robin, um, there's a typo on, it looks like page six. Typo under six. the amendment to decrease funding um the it didn't pass but it's got a copy of the 1200 vote total it should be i believe 210 2100 the vote should be two yes 10 no and zero abstain for the amendment. Oh, I, I see, for the voting, sorry. Yes. Okay, and you said it was a typo? Yeah, it, it looks like the the one got put, it, it was just 12 zero, zero instead of two, 10, ten. Zero. Okay, you got it, I will fix it. The one that. was out of order. Okay. Yeah. And then I see Ren has his hand up. About uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, vote no on these minutes. Uh, I think the, uh, all the commentary uh, of various people uh, kind of summarized in, in, in ways that 
make it hard to understand, or in some cases, I think is not not clear at all. And uh, I don't believe our minutes are required to have all of that commentary. And I, I think especially the uh, uh, the public commentary uh, should not be included. I think the board members need to make their own notes and uh, go forward with commentary from the public. Uh, but trying to summarize those comments, uh, especially when they're uh, personal attacks or they are uh, off, <laughs> off the subject in terms of what our neighborhood council is trying to do, uh, I think it just uh, muddies up the water. And of course, our minutes now are 11 pages long. So if nothing else, it's a waste of paper. So I'm, I'm going to vote no on the minutes. Thank you, Ren. Uh, see Tess. Hi, Hi. Um, so thank you. My my first comment was, um, I think, to correct the spelling of Carrie Negri's name, which is on page um, page four in the Toluca Homeowners Association section. And um, with all due respect to Wren, while I would agree that personal attacks uh, can probably be left out of the minutes, I'm personally in favor of more detail and not less. And I think it's it's good to know who's at these meetings and what they say, even you know, short of short of personal attacks or accusations. So um, I'm in support of detail. Thank you. Thanks, Tess. Uh, I don't see any other hands up. And I, I want to be mindful of this evening's time. Also, we were only about probably 15% of the way through the meeting. It's nice to okay, so, so we're going to go ahead and um, is there any other discussion? I, I think I don't there's see no any. other hand up. All right, no we're going to go ahead and take a vote. I'm going to start with Catherine. Wait, let me read it again. Motion A, to approve the GTLNC January 18th, 2022. General Board minutes, and I'm going to put as amended because of the, um, the vote. Hold on, okay. Um, Catherine, how do you vote? A yes. Arthur? Yes. Robin, I'm a yes. Nick? Nick, are uh, you muted? I, don't, I, don't see I, can't, him. I can't hear oh, you. I Nick. Yes. Okay, thank you. Ren? No. Okay, wait, hang on one sec. Let me make sure I get that. Okay, uh, Fred? Yes. Matt? Yes. Lee is excused. Susanna? Yes. Paige? Yes. Tess? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Sean? Yes. Jake is excused. Colby? Yes. Okay, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve yeses, and one no. Twelve. One zero. It passes. Okay. Uh, yep. Thank okay. you, Rob. Go now ahead. We'll go back on track to GAC under committee reports. Hi, Catherine. Hi. Um, so I will read, read the motion and uh, we'll get a first and second if there are them. Motion C approve the bylaws amendments red line for adoption by the GTLNC. Do I have a first to open discussion? Robin. Thank you, Robin. Do I have a second? Yes. Thank you, Tess. And before we dive into this, I want to explain the process a little bit. Obviously we have a massive 20 some page document that you all have um, in front of you with these changes. If there are any changes to the red line that we make this evening, we'll vote on those uh, and those require a majority, a simple majority to be made into changes. The actual motion that we have here will require two thirds of all members present. So right now we have 13 board members here this evening. That means in order to pass we need nine yes votes because that would be two thirds present. It doesn't matter how many people abstain, it would still require nine yes votes to pass. Um, all right, so 
tests, how do you think would be the simplest way to get through a 25 page document? Well, um, perhaps we should assume or hope that people have read it and um, we can go through section by section, although that could be a very long meeting and perhaps not necessary. Uh, if there are any questions, maybe we start with that. Um, this really, to me, the most important part of these bylaws is to clarify and to restore to the entire board the ability to agendize items, which we've discussed in the past has been problematic as right now. And with all due respect to Colby, and this is a, a, a process or a, 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 a bylaw that precedes him in office, it, an item can only be agendized by the president. And I don't think any member of the board should be precluded from doing that. That's why we're elected in order to represent people. So that is my main priority. Um, everything else is subordinate to that, although there are certainly important things that we have done to clarify, to attempt to clarify, uh, to bring uh, accountability a bit more to, to, uh, to board members so that we have, we're sure of participation. But I would suggest that we just start with uh, any questions and maybe just answering the questions would be enough and we can yeah. go from Let's there. Let's dive in. Are there, are there any questions or specific concerns are or changes requested? Um, well, I at, guess a uh, grievance committee, uh, I mean, I, from what I understand, Dunn is supposed to be yeah, a grievance so committee. So the grievance committee language is about 80% language that was pulled directly from Dunn's template. And I'm happy to put Dunn's template on the screen right now. Um, is, but is that template, is that from what I was told by Gibson, and I guess he's still on the call or, or Erica now, was that we don't, we don't have need or should have grievance committees at this point. So, to so, done with all our grievances. Yeah, right now the grievance process, um, we pulled this language from Dunn. And then here is the language that we added in, which I can show you. Page is that, Catherine? Um, so it'll be on page 19 of the red line. Um, and so most of this language comes directly from Dunn's template. It was a copy paste. And the part that we added is our grievance process if we decided to actually consider a grievance um, internally rather than refer it to the regional grievance panel. And there are certain situations where we don't have that option. For instance, if a board member brings the grievance, GTLNC is not allowed to internally decide to um, have a grievance panel. Um, but the language for this grievance panel process was copied off of Soro Neighborhood Council's bylaw, South Robertson Neighborhood Council. Um, so we're not breaking any ground here, <laughs> um, but essentially we'd have sort of a jury pool that people could sign up for. And when a grievance came up, if we could create a panel of three out of that grievance panel pool, we would, if we're not able to create a panel of three non-board member stakeholders, then the board is obligated to waive consideration and refer it to the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment's regional grievance panel. Um, okay, so, actually, you know, yeah. so I, see, I see Tom Sung has his uh, hand raised. Let me, let me call upon him. I'm sure he has something to say about this. Hi, John. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Hi, Catherine. No, thank you for, for, for this. Well, just to clarify for the board, um, that this is right, that um, in certain situations that we that uh, the board can waive their own grievance process and then just bypass the process, and not bypass, but just um, not have their own grievance panel, but just go straight to the regional grievance panel. And in the case that Catherine brought up, right, if a board member files a grievance, also, if the board themselves just said, you know what, we're not going to deal with this, we'll waive this, and then we'll just go straight to the regional panel. So thank you for, you know, just cut and pasting. A lot of this information is in our template here. 
but then um, I think you're putting some, but then the, the, there will be situations when the board will need to, uh, you know, have their own grievance panel and their own process as well. So just want to reaffirm that. Yeah, and I'll scroll up a little bit here that when a certified grievance is received, the board has the option at that point to say we don't want to form our own grievance. And when I say our own, I shouldn't be saying that because no board member is allowed to serve on the grievance panel. It has to be a non-board member stakeholder. Um, but yeah, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. This section was copy pasted. <laughs> Okay. Thank you, Thomas. <coughs> um, Any other questions for Catherine? Um, I, I actually, yeah, Toby, Toby, this is uh, Tom soon again. Can I just add, I'm sorry, Rand, can I, can I ask Catherine a quick yeah, question? Ahead. Yeah. You know, so one thing, so the, the process for this board members is that uh, this will need to be submitted to our department for review by April the 1st. And then, uh, then we'll, we'll go through this. So one, one component of this, and I haven't had a chance to look at this is that, Will you be changing the board composition with that? With we are not. Okay, okay. And I'm, I'm bringing up just as for the edification of the board right, for is the stakeholders is that if you were gonna go to do a board composition change, you would need to, uh, we would need to present this to the Board of Neighborhood Commissioners. Okay, I just wanna put that out there. So anytime, anytime there's a board structure change, it goes before the Board of Neighborhood Commissioners. So that's good, that's good to know. I just wanna know that ahead of time. Okay. So. Thank you. Yes, we are not trying to do okay. a composition change. No. Thank, thank you so much, Catherine. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Colby. Ren, go, go ahead. You, and I see Ren has his hand raised. Hi, Ren. Here we go. I uh, just wanted to point out that uh, on page 14, towards the bottom, we have uh, a requirement that uh, not more than four board members be on a committee. And so uh, our planning committee, I think now has five. So we'll need to uh, have one of them drop off. Um, and uh, <laughs> I'll work with Colby and, and Catherine and whoever about uh, uh, how we, what process we use to have somebody uh, removed from the committee. Um, yeah. Can I jump in for a second, Ren, and explain why sure. that number is there? Yeah. So we've been instructed by Department of Neighborhood Empowerment that we cannot have a majority of quorum on any committee. And since our quorum will be eight, um, the majority of eight is considered to be five, which is greater than 50%. So four is not more than 50%. So four is the maximum number. And, and that does create a problem, which we can discuss after Ren's done um, with our executive committee, which is currently five. So we're finding a little workaround in there. Um, sorry, Ren, I, thank you for letting me interrupt. Do you, do you have a, a, a process in mind of how we would uh, select four out of five or, or will we just have to do some kind of random or how, how are you picturing that? Um, we haven't established a process at, at this time, and right now, the way that we have set up committee um, membership is that, you know, the committee chairs determine the membership of their respective committees. Actually, that's what it says on the screen, I'm realizing. Um, very helpful. Um, unless the board votes otherwise, for instance, if they felt the chair of a committee was inappropriately you know, selecting people that would only agree with them, um, the board could take action. But really, at this point, I think it's up to the committee chair to determine that. And if it's drawing names out of hat or asking for volunteers or maybe taking a look at if someone is serving on several committees, asking that person to step aside. I do want to remind everyone that committee attendance and committee membership are different. So being a voting member of a committee means that you vote at the committee meetings, but you can attend a committee meeting even if you're not a member um, of that committee and you'd be able to speak at that committee meeting. And nothing that is voted on at committee meetings other than the committee minutes is final. Everything needs to come before the general board for a vote before it becomes an official act of GTLNC. So nothing me, is final in committee. Let me also throw in there that 
um, the details of this Ren, will be worked out in the standing rules and um, where the nitty gritty of how these things function will occur. And unlike the bylaws for which we have a deadline to submit for review by done, the standing rules are, are a more flexible document that will enable us to make these changes as needed and without a deadline. So I think that's something that can be addressed in the standing rules. Thank you, Tess. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And then remind me, um, let's see, vacancies. Um, is it, what kind of vote, a majority or two thirds vote? Do um, so for vacancies, apologies, I'm having a scrolling issue. We're just gonna use the mouse. Um, okay, vacancies. Um, this would be essentially a majority vote for filling a vacancy. So it's basically the way it's set up is an instant runoff between the top two vote getters if no one gets a majority. And in the event of a tie, which we mm -hmm. had <laughs> happen, yes. um, yeah. there is a coin toss would resolve it. Oh my God. Um, so, yeah, if let's say there are four people running and each of them gets, you know, five votes, four votes, two votes, two votes or whatever, the five and the four would have an immediate runoff that um, everyone would get to vote again. And you're not obligated to vote for the same person you voted for the first time, even if they're still in the running. Um, Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then agenda setting. Um, I saw Kevin's hand go up. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I didn't see that. And then down. Ed, sorry, Kevin. Did you have a question? I, I do have a question. So, in the yes. event that there's a vacancy, as it stands right now, the president nominates a person. Is that how it works? Yes. Right now, the president would nominate a person, and the board would have the opportunity to either accept or reject that by a vote. Um, right. This would produce the situation where instead of voting yes or no on a person, an individual, it would be a vote um, amongst candidates. So we've been using the term selection for this to distinguish it from election as in the stakeholders are electing. Um, but yeah, so you are selecting between candidates rather than approving or not approving a single um, nominee. I guess I'm a little confused. So right now the president nominates some, uh, nominates candidates and then the board. Right now the down. president nominates one person to fill one position. So the board wouldn't necessarily be considering multiple candidates, only the president would. This would change it so that if there are multiple people interested, the board could select from among them. So we're taking that power away from the president is essentially what's happening? Um, yeah. I mean, if you want to think of it that way, the board always has the opportunity or currently the way it's written, the board has the opportunity to say no to the president's nominee. Um, but this just allows Kevin, us to also hear from the candidates. Kevin, you might look at it the other way around that the, the ability to select someone is restored to you, to the board members. So that's how I see it. Also kind of taking the burden off the president. <laughs> well, but I, I, I mean, it kind of sounds like, but I mean, that's certainly one way of looking at it. It also does seem like it takes, you know, it's, it's, it's taking that ability away from the president and it's making it more of a, it's democracy. it more of a process. A democracy. <laughs> a democracy is what it yeah, is. Yeah, I mean, I, I think no. it depends on- No, on I don't actually look at it you... that way. And this is, I mean, but this is a democracy. We, we all were, we all ran, we all got votes. You know, we all voted for the president, albeit it was a coin toss, but some, but most of the time it's not. So. I don't think 
I mean, if, and, and I don't this think... isn't. I, I want to be clear. This is not an indictment of Colby in any way, shape, or form. This and and one of the things that we actually did in in this bylaw amendments draft is we gave the president back the power to vote. Um, technically, the president is not supposed to vote on any items. Um, and since the president no longer is the sole agenda setting authority, the president in this new bylaws draft now has the ability to vote on all the items before the neighborhood council. Right now, they're not supposed get, to be. So, yeah, so Catherine, it, can I ask you, do other neighborhood councils follow this? Order. Yeah, so this actually was copied from uh, Soro Neighborhood Council. You'll hear that word a lot today. From, we, we're from still where? I'm sorry. South, South Robertson Neighborhood South Robertson Council. Neighborhood Council. We, but what about... You might have plagiarized City? them at length. Studio yeah. City or one of um, the more local ones. I do not know specifically about uh, the other local ones. Um, but, you know, we're we're not interested in taking power away from anyone. Um, we're just hoping to give the rest of the board um, more to say in this particular thing. I also want to remind everyone that it's incredibly rare. You know, it happens maybe once or twice a term. This is not a regular occurrence that there is a vacancy. Um, I don't, all, all, I, all I would say is that I, the way that it is now in terms of how the president has the ability to nominate, I don't think that's undemocratic. We, the board still has the ability to vote up or down on somebody. So I think this just makes it, it makes this, it makes it more of a process. And I'll take your word for it that we wouldn't be having this conversation if Colby didn't win, but it just seems like, I, I, I don't know. It just, I don't, Kevin, I don't see I why this element needs to be making changed. making suggestions like that. Well, I was made a suggestion that I'm saying, I'm suggesting something that's not democratic. I don't, I don't appreciate that, but um, well, I'm not Kevin, accusing anybody. As, Kevin, as democratic as it may be with Colby making the selection, it's even more democratic with all of us making this election. And um, just I, don't keep, think I get it, but just keep in mind, it's very possible Colby won't be president in a few months. And it's quite possible that he will. Many people here support and, him. And it's He's not, really let's, let's leave Colby out of this. <laughs> yeah, I would just say, I, I agree. I don't think this is about, you know, whether Colby would select an appropriate person. I think it's just about the process and whether or not um, you, we should all have the opportunity to have a say in something like that. And I, I mean, I expected this, conversation to get a little contentious and it seems like maybe this, that's where it's headed so i just want to say that i'm not I, trying to make anything contentious. no no, no I'm just, I, and that's not I mean, an accusation. We're, we're supposed to be discussing these different points and it seems like people are getting defensive and i i think it's a valid conversation to have but I, I guess what i meant was and this is not anything about your tone or anything anybody said so far what i mean is this this is this was bound to be a discussion where people were going to have passionate opinions, not even specifically about this, but there's a number of changes in this 25 page document. I was anticipating that. So before it goes any further down the line, I do just wanna say, having read the 25 pages, um, which I'm sure we all did, it does look like an incredible amount of work. And I think that there was a lot of thought um, that went into this. And so I just, I wanted to say thank you to Tess and Catherine um, for, for taking this on and for anybody else in the committee that helped because it does look like uh, it was a very thoughtful process on your part, and I and I appreciate the time that you guys put in. Thank you. Thank you. And I'd like and to add to that, if that's possible. We have, we have hands up also. Um, oh, I'll, I'm I'll, sorry. I'll, I'll... Could, could we go to Matt first? Because his hand has been up for a little while. Sure. Thank you. By the way, I also want to echo Paige. Uh, you guys really did spend so much time on this, and so I appreciate it as well. Um, but the thing is for, so my question is moving forward, this is such a huge document. I'm also kind of curious how we're going to do it because for this section, I agree with Kevin. I wouldn't vote to change it like this. I, you know, we vote for a president. I'd rather have the president, regardless of Colby or whoever it is, I'd rather have the president give us one person or two people and let us vote on it as opposed to us. Um, so I would vote against this change, 
But the question is moving forward because there is so many, so much to talk about. How are you, are we gonna just vote per section? Um, just out of curiosity, because I will be, you know, if it's every Yeah, I, I apologize for not being clear earlier. So the idea is if someone has a specific request for a change, we can vote on that as an amendment to this draft, or I should, let me, let me use a different word than amendment, as a change to this draft. And by a simple majority, um, that change could pass or not pass. And if it passes, it would be incorporated into the overall vote that we would have. Um, so if there are specific changes that people would like to make a motion to make to this draft prior to voting on passage of the draft as a whole, we can hear those. Um, and if there are ones that do not pass, they wouldn't be included in the final vote. If there are ones that do pass, it would be part of the final vote that requires two thirds of all uh, board members present, which I'll remind everyone is nine is the number of yes votes needed. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I look, I'm a nonprofit guy. I sit on a ton of boards and or have sat on a ton of boards and I write bylaws for a living and they suck. So truly, thank you guys for going through this because bylaws are the worst, um, but they're also really important. And so for me, I would definitely just on this section alone, I would vote not to move forward with this change. But when we get there, we can get there. Okay, Sean, go ahead. No, I just was going to say that, you know, a big part of this was hashed out each and every month. And we all, you know, there was, a, there was a, we, we wanted more participation. Um, so we absolutely did the, you know, there was a lot of work to be had. We just wish we had more input from everybody. And so I, I get everyone's thought process, but this was an open opportunity for people to join, to comment. And we just didn't get a lot of the people comment. So a lot of what we did was just done in smaller fashion with, with a fewer number of people. But I welcome everyone's comments. So I just wanted to put that out there with the amount of time and effort that was put into changing these bylaws. And Sean, I'm I, sorry I just want to, I, I appreciate everybody's time in this. And obviously it's a tremendous amount of work. So please don't let that be lost. I just, we're talking about it. And so I'm bringing up questions, but I, I don't mean any, any. Yeah. Know, and I mean, I think it like, sounds like we should probably have a vote on that as a change. I don't know if we want to do that right this second or, or have any other discussions. Um, I will say this clause is referenced a few times. So if we do want to make changes to it, we'll have to make them in such a way that um, those clauses that reference it aren't rendered. <laughs> there aren't problems with those. Um, but would the, yeah. would the change then be the language as it is versus the current language with no change or are there specific other suggestions that people are making? Um, yeah, I mean, I would say we need to retain a portion of what has been put in here as far as the voting process that would be used in the annual meeting. Um, where we do currently select from amongst board candidates for uh, the executive committee positions. So we need to retain that, but for other vacancies, we could offer the option to retain the existing language um, if a seat becomes vacant outside of the annual meeting. Uh, sorry, Kevin, go ahead. What, what about just making a motion on, on anything that changes the president's ability to choose? Kevin, you would have to make a motion. You would say, I motion to, and then we need a first and second. Also, we have one more hand. We have a uh, attendees also, just, just so you know. Yeah. Um, sure, uh, let's, let's move to the public. Any members of the public, uh, if you are calling in, a reminder that you can press star nine to raise your hand if you're interested in speaking. I saw Kathy, Kathy first. Um, oops, where did you go? Kathy, I believe you are able to unmute. Um, thank you. I know this is a long process. I too uh, expressed my appreciation to the women that, and all, or anybody else that uh, spent time on this. It, it is arduous changing bylaws. 
on this particular issue, just a couple of quick comments. Um, one is would be that um, uh, this does not preclude the way it's written now, or uh, if it was if 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 it wasn't open to the whole board to nominate people, it does not preclude them to recommend to the president names of people for the president to um, to keep in mind and before um, making the nomination of whoever that whoever the president would want to nominate for the board. So I do feel that the board members do have input uh, the way that the bylaws were before. And the last, and, and then two other quick comments. One, and I'm not saying change this one way or the other. I, I know you put a lot of work into this, but there is opportunity for board members to tell a president who they would recommend fill a position. It is a rare occurrence uh, to fill a position and that, and that person only serves as long as uh, for the remainder of that tenure of the board um, and then needs to be elected again by the public if they're coming back on. Um, and then this, uh, the other thing was, um, uh, it was mentioned that this restores this um, section but it actually it changes the section since the inception of the neighborhood council i think it's always been open for the board president to fill a slot that was vacated by somebody else in the past so it really isn't a, a, rest, a restoring to something it's it's changing that that process sorry um, when i said restore i meant the president's ability to vote on matters not his ability to appoint Um, okay, I think it was, I think I heard restore on, on something else, but that's, that's fine. And I had a third thing, but then it went out of my head. Thank you for, I'm so sorry. Thank you. Thanks for listening. <laughs> if you think it. of it, raise your hand again. That's okay. No, 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 no. I know you have a lot to accomplish here. Thank you. Okay. Thank may you. I, may I say before we get to the next public comment in terms of restore versus change, Kathy, thank you for that clarification. The fact is that I was not able to find any uh, bylaws dating back further than a couple of years. And I would be very interested to see the original bylaws and any amendments since then. Um, but apparently record retention only goes back a couple of years. So it's good to know since you appear to have uh, historical knowledge that I do not, thank you. Um, next hand up from the public is Jonathan Gregory. I believe you are able to unmute. Thank you very much. Um, I was with uh, Tess and Catherine a lot of the time, almost all of the time that we had the meetings and it was a lot of work. We talked about all the different parts. We talked about every single part, every single line in the bylaws. So it was really engaging. Um, the word that comes up for me that I would ask you to think about is collaboration. Um, the structure, the bylaws of the organization ought to egg everyone into a state of collaboration rather than any, what really bothered me was when one person is choosing someone who votes. But if you all feel really strongly about the president um, selecting or nominating or being in charge of who replaces, who fills a vacancy, well, then that's the process of evolution. What's really important to me is we're asking ourselves, what's good for the stakeholders? And the stakeholders should be able to, I, I also, before I move on, I, I wanna say, if anyone is on this board that has my confidence that they would do an extreme effort on balancing different interests, that would be Colby. This is absolutely not about personality. I think there's, among the, the more superior forces on the on the board right now is the ability of Colby to make to, to, to hear different different voices. So that's not what this is about, but it's about, you know, what does it look like when people are assigning people to vote? It's kind of weird. But if you need that, if you're not ready for that evolution, what really is important is that board members are agendizing um, what goes on the agenda. That that's really important that it, it's an independent, that all the board members, that stakeholders can go to any one of you and approach you and say, this is a huge problem I got going on. 
can you help me? And you can say to the stakeholder with relative confidence, yes, I can help you. Um, and meaning you can take it in, in front of all of the board in the fashion of an agenda item, subject to what we create in the standing rules. Um, collaboration is what I think it's all about. It really isn't at all about creating a document that takes anything away from everyone, anyone. It's about giving the collaborative spirit to the organization. And I'm not saying it doesn't exist at all, but I am saying there's a lot of conflict that a collaborative bylaw, bylaws will, will address. I think it would be a lot easier to work together. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jonathan. All right, any other hands, any other questions on the bylaws or requested changes? Um, as I know there were a couple of clarifications that you were hoping we could add in regarding um, removal versus censure. Um, for instance, if, if there's a failure to attend three meetings in a row, people are eligible for removal. And you mentioned wanting to clarify censure is not required prior to that removal. Uh, same with if a board member fails to complete their training, um, then censure is not required prior to a vote for removal. Um, Yes. Um, do we want to get to that now, or see if there are any other see if there are any other comments first? Oh, I, I had a quick comment about agenda setting. So essentially, any any board member can put anything on the agenda. Is is that is that right? There's no vote. For that. No. So um, the executive committee would still. The executive committee would still review the agenda for compliance. So nothing that is not allowed to be on the agenda would go on the agenda. Um, okay, but, but you're saying that, and then the exec committee would then, I guess, I, 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 you know, vote amongst, amongst that five member committee to either agendize that item or not agendize that item. Is that how it goes? The, the executive committee would review all of the items submitted. So the secretary prepare a draft agenda as Robin does now. Um, and then the executive committee would approve it. And if it was determined yes. that any of the items on the agenda were non-compliant, they would be removed. Um, okay. By a vote or just, just, we'll figure that, we'll figure that out later. Well, if it's not compliant, there doesn't need to be a vote. I know, but it has to be a decision of, you know, it's a difference of opinion. Or, okay. Wonder how that works. Um, okay. Um, uh, I see, see two of the hands raised. Yeah, uh, Matt, then Ren, then Tess. So right. Matt, you're up. Yeah, thank you. Um, okay, so so I just want to. I know we had talked about this before. Would now be the time to make a motion then to to basically not take away the power of the president to choose? Yes. Um, so Matt, you would have to say I move. Sure. Okay. Well, did you want to finish anything, Catherine? Or are you... I, I was gonna, I was gonna make a suggestion on um, how you phrase that, okay. um, which would be to make a motion to restore the original language, stating that the president will nominate uh, to fill a vacancy during a term, but the uh, selection process is maintained for selection at the annual meeting. Would you be comfortable with making that suggestion so that this process will be used at the annual meeting, but the nomination and approval process would be the one for filling a vacancy outside of the annual meeting. Does anybody else- Does that have, make sense? <laughs> guys, does anybody else have anything to say while I'm just reading really quickly? Um, that, that is a lot of, a lot of language. Yeah. Uh, can we s simplify it a little bit? I mean, ultimately my issue, I'm not interested yet in taking away, um, taking away, uh, choice from the the president to make this decision so you know for me at this point i'd i'd move just to basically put it back to the same language that it was 
But your concern is on the vacancies, right? Not on, because I, I do think it's important to have, having sat through that annual meeting where we had to resort to a coin toss and we were all sort of guessing as to whether or not that was the correct uh, you know that thing um, to do. That, I think that would be good. That particular meeting was extremely unusual. I sat in the audience as a public member and also on the board for several years. I've never seen that happen. That was extremely sure. unusual. And it sure. was, it, it had to do with the old board not passing on to the new board in the June meeting. And when we have our elections again, or actually when we pick a new executive board, it will happen that way. So uh, it was just an extreme situation, which is, and unfortunately that's your entry to this neighborhood council. I'm so sorry for that because I've never seen that happen before. I, I completely understood that. I'm sure it's rare, but I think it would have been helpful just to have a document that said in the event of a tie, this is how you resolve it. You know, because I think at the time, nobody well, that, knew. That's why it. we went to Dunn and Dunn did a coin flip. Right. Yeah, I, I didn't love the idea of the coin flip, but I, but I understand why we did it. So um, at this point, I think what I, the motion that I would make, and unless anybody else has anything else that they want to say would be to put it back to the language for the appointment. Uh, do we have a second? Um, do you want to go with a hand raise or does anybody want to just call it out? Someone has to vocalize that they second that motion to, to make that change to this draft. Was there not a first though? Yeah, I mean, that's Matt. Matt is the first. His, his making the motion. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll second it. Is it? No. Thank you, Ren. This is just for discussion. Okay. We have, we have, we have, have a, a hands raised. We have a second. Before. And, yeah. and before we move forward, the motion is to return. Or Section to re six, or, sorry, to return the uh, Article 5 Governing Board okay, Section 6 oh, so vacancies. Go slow because you're breaking up. Motion to return yes. article. Apologies. Article five. Five. Section six. Section six. Vacancies. Vacancies. Uh huh. To the existing bylaw language. Existing bylaw language. Okay, that is the motion on the table. Thank you. And Matt made the motion, so he is the first, and Ren seconded. Correct. Thank you. Um, so I guess we'll have a discussion on this if people have more to say on this point. Um, and Tess, I see your hand up, and then Kevin will be next. Um, it might be slightly moot at this point, but when we were discussing about the agenda items uh, being reviewed by the executive committee. It's only to make sure that all of them are compliant with laws. So that's all. Okay. Um, Kevin, do you have a comment on the restoring of section six vacancies to the current bylaw language? So striking all of this vacancy process. Um, no, no, it might be a mute point at this at this juncture, but I just your what you would what you had been suggesting regarding the selection. I was it was it was I was confused. Did I and I apologize if I'm wrong, but were you saying that in the event that there's a vacancy and the president nominates two people that though that and then the board votes on those people, that those positions would no. only be- well, So, so what, I, was, or, were, what we, I had been proposing, which is not what we're voting on, what I had been proposing is that this vacancies process, this how we vote for it, um, would be retained as far as the annual meeting selection of the executive committee process, but for filling a vacancy in the middle of like not at the annual meeting, that would be returned to the current 
bylaws which state that the president shall nominate and then the board. Catherine, you're breaking up just a bit. My internet connection is unstable. I'm going to temporarily stop screen sharing in case that helps. Okay. I apologize so much for not having the language in front of us right this second. And, and Colby, do you have the language? I sent everybody the um, all, all the documents for tonight's meeting. So can you pull it up, Colby, so she's not having to do that? Thank you uh, so much. Thanks, so Kathy. one day I'll get better internet. Yes. Can that be under you email? See, hold on. You know, I, you I've see, never seen it before. It's, it's in the document I sent you. It's the bylaw red line. You just hold have on. to pull up that one document. Hold on. Uh, while he does that, and I she, will yeah, say. Yeah, you can continue. Mm -hmm. my, my personal feeling is that, well, I think it could end up being tedious. My hope is that this would be a pretty rare occurrence. Um, and, you know, I think that it helps if the board feels like they have a say. Historically, the board has not felt like they had much of a say um, in this process. And so part of this was about allowing people to feel like they actually get to participate. That's why we did it. Um, and I also believe very strongly that even if we strike this language, we should put in some language about what the voting process is um, at the annual meeting in the standing rules uh, so that we know how to deal with, you know, a tie or something. I think, I think we need to have that in there because even at our annual meeting, Gibson, our Dunn rep, you know, was struggling to figure out how to handle it because we don't have good language to define that process. So we need to establish that language. We have to do that at some point. I found, I think Support I found that. Robin. Okay. Um, I wasn't able to pull it, pull it up so people I, can I can't pull it up on my, if I do, I, I'll lose our, our YouTube because I'm signed in to. Oh, you can't. Okay. Screen. That's, but I can read that's it fine. Or, Let me, I'll, I'll, See if I can bring it back up, back up again. You know what? I um, think I have a pretty decent internet connection. I can do it. You okay. 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 Um, I'll make you. Uh, All right. Okay. And, you and should I be guess... able to share your screen right now, Tess. You don't need to be made co-host, but okay. Right okay. now, we are discussing the motion that's on the table that Matt brought up, and if we have more discussion, that's great. But we also need to vote on that before we can proceed. Yeah. Okay. So. so are, are we ready to go to a vote on that item, which as a reminder, if any of you are looking at this at home, the vacancies section, uh, Article 5, Section 6 begins in the middle of page 7. Um, so it's Article 5, Section 6, page 7? Yes. I'm right here. Okay, I'm going to put page 7. Okay. Um, okay, I guess, uh, so to clarify, we are voting on changing this to, to, to its original language, language, and it will require a simple majority to return it to that. Voting yes or no on this right now does not affect how you ultimately vote on the overall bylaws. Correct. So let me read the motion again. This motion is to return the page seven, article five, section six vacancies to the existing bylaw language. We'll start with Catherine. Do you vote yes to keep existing or no to change it? Uh, no, 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 hold on, hold on. To clarify, the motion is to return it. So voting yes, yes would be to return it. Oh, you you are correct. It hasn't so, been changed. So if it hasn't been changed. Then no, nothing no nothing has been changed. That's what the discussion is. So we shouldn't. So the so the motion so, would actually. So if you be want if you want to if you want to keep the language that's in this draft, you would vote no on this motion. If you want to use the language that's in our bylaws right now, not the language in this draft, you would vote yes on this motion. But, but what about, as you mentioned, uh, the coin toss 
if we want to keep that in, should that be a, a that, that's, a that's a different we can we can depending on how this vote goes, we could then make that change yeah. afterward. Yeah, this is just to keep the language to return the language to not use the new language to go with the old language. I think so so yes, Catherine, yes is the old language. Yes. Say it again. If you vote yes, it means you want to return the language back to the existing bylaws. And if you yes. vote so no, if you vote yes, you want the president to appoint. If you vote no, you want the board to select, okay. essentially. Even easier. Uh, yes to keep old language, no to keep new language. The new red line. Like, I still think we're confused. No, no, no. no. <laughs> yeah. It's confusing. We're doing it, got it. We're doing it the other way. Different. It makes sense. I think everybody can figure it out, but we really should be doing it the other way. I mean, yeah. like as me as everyone goes along, let's let's just say okay, no, well, as I, I call your up. name, you say whether you want to keep it or return to the old language. Yeah, so we'll yeah, just have you say it clearly so I can keep track. Okay. okay. So I'm going to start Catherine. with Catherine. Do you want to keep what you are proposing or go back to the old language? I want to keep the proposal. Okay, so that would be a no. Right. Arthur? Return. Return, so that's a yes. Robin, I'm going to say yes. Nick? No, I'm with the- uh, Okay, Ren? Yes. You want to keep, uh, you want to return the language. Return, okay. yes. Fred. No. No. Matt. Yes, it's my motion. All right. Lee is excused. <laughs> Susanna. Yes. Uh, Paige. No. Okay. Tess. No. Kevin. You want to keep it or go back to the old language? I want to keep, uh, I want to go back to the old language. So yes. So that's a yes. And Sean? No. No. And Jake is excused. I am, oh, Colby. Yes. Yes. Let me count. Everybody listen. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven yeses. And one, two, three, four, five, six no's. Motion carries, we're sticking with the old language. Thanks, so Lee, for not seven. showing up. Oh, <laughs> don't say that. Seven, six, <laughs> zero. Motion carries. Okay, go ahead, Catherine. In, in that event, um, there are several other places that reference this. Um, and so I would like us to, I would like us to change those. Let me see, I will look and find them. Um, So let's see. Um, under um, Article Six, Officers, Section Three, Selection of Officers, um, it references in accordance with the voting procedure defined in Article Five, Section Six. I am proposing to amend that or change that to in accordance with the voting procedure defined in the standing rules. Um, where is and guys, I got to put my daughter to bed. I, are there any more votes coming up that are important? Yes, this the bylaws haven't been voted on yet. Um, ah. she literally um, wants to go to sleep. Um. <laughs> okay. I think if I'm not crazy. That's the only place where we specifically, oh, um, and then for 
Article 5 Governing Board Section 1 Composition. The youth member, um, well, that will still be maintained actually. So that's fine. Um, so the only thing would be uh, on page 13, Article 6, Section 3, uh, to change the officers shall be selected um, in accordance with the voting procedure defined in the standing rules. Um, Catherine, what um, what is this section you're talking about? Is this again with the um, changing the president's role? No, it's it's just to say right now it states that the uh, the officers, the executive committee, will be yeah. selected by the council from among their number. Right now, Tess, if you can go to page thirteen. Thirteen, yeah. Okay, so it's page 13, um, um, Article 6, Section what? Section three, 3, Selection of Officers. Right now it says all officers shall be selected by the council from among their number in accordance with the voting procedure defined in Article 5, Section 6, Vacancies. Since there's no longer a voting procedure defined in that article, I would like to change that sentence to be voting procedure defined in the standing rules. Yeah. I mean, bring it back to where it was before. Yes. Originally, or is this a change? No, it if would be a change. Rules, you're, you're proposing a different because the standing rules. We, the, we, would, we right. would put the voting procedure. We would put that whole voting process of how it works if there's a tie and all of that jazz into the standing rules rather than it being in the bylaws. It would be in the standing rule. Okay, and we don't and have. It would only apply rules. for the annual meeting selection of officers. Um, I'm, I'm not seeing a change to what's on the share screen. You know what? I'm trying to figure out how to get back to, sorry. Okay. What was the page you needed? 13, about midway down. Okay. Are you seeing it move now? Yes. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Is that it? Yes. Yes. So this would now read instead of Article 5, Section 6 vacancies, it would say as defined in the standing rules. Um, does anyone second that motion? Hey, okay, so I'm sorry. Hold on. Did you just present a motion? Yes, I, I'm making a motion to change this language so that instead of referencing a voting procedure in Section 6 vacancies that we just eliminated, we reference a voting procedure defined in the standing rules okay. for the selection of officers at the annual meeting. And you give me the language so I can type it in the minutes. So that you are making a motion to change the language in change Article Six. Uh, hold on, language in, and it's our page thirteen, Article Six, Section Three of Executive Officers. I will copy that from a selection book. of officers. Selection of officers. Selection of officers, not executive officers. No, no, it says selection of officers. Of officers. Okay, I got to change that. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. All That's officers it. shall be selected by the council from among their number in accordance with. The, okay, the you're, voting procedure. So you're going too fast unless you just want to use the recording. I'm fine with Defined that. Defined in the standing rules. The only change is Article 5, Section 6 vacancies now reads the standing rules. Um, okay, I'll go back. To change the language in page 13, Article 6, Section 13, Selection of officers, all officers shall. It's section three. 
section three selection of officers. Uh-huh. Uh, just say change the language from article six, sorry, article five, section six vacancies to oh, oh, it, it, the standing rules. Okay, to change the language in page 13, article six, section 13, selection. Section three. Section three, selection of officers. From Article 5, Section 6, vacancies. Article 5, Section 6, vacancies. Yes. To. To. The standing rules. Standing rules. Got it. Okay. Do we have a first? Oh, no, you're the first. I'm the first. (laughs) first. Sorry. Is there a second? Because just so you guys know, otherwise, it's Dana. Thank you. <laughs> hey, wait, who is the second? Susanna. 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 Thank you, Susanna. Okay, discussion on the reason why we would vote for this or not vote for this. Is there discussion? Right now, there's literally no voting procedure. So these would be very confusing bylaws referencing a voting procedure that's non existent. In that article. But we haven't, we have to f- fill that bucket, which is the standing rules, essentially, right? Which we don't have. We would to. have to put it in the standing rules. Yeah. Right. But we, yes. we don't have that. We have to define, we have to define what those standing rules are in the future. Yes. We will have to do that, but we can't. Be- but isn't that the same thing? Like, for instance, if, if that, if the standing rules say that the board elects, to fill the vacancy seat, right? That that will would that supersede what we just voted on? You see what I'm saying? Like, no. The standing rules say that the board votes in, um, you know, the replacement uh, to fill that vacancy. Is that what you're saying? The standing um, rules wouldn't say that because we just voted to not. I know, but I'm saying that that's... Yeah, that, the that, standing rules would just be the process for how that vote works. Okay. It's the same thing. Okay, yeah. So, it's uh, you know, the president would nominate and then... So we... Okay, and then the standing rules would say how that vote works if it's 50% or two-thirds or whatever you say. Yeah. I see uh, Matt has his hand raised. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm just... Like everybody probably here, I'm just a little bit confused. Do you mind just one last time reading that motion? I'm just, I just. Yes, I will read the motion. The motion is to change the language in page 13, article six, section three, selection of officers from article five, section six, vacancies to standing rules. Okay, and standing rules. And that is where we would move the vote process and tie breaking process. Got it. I see Ren has his hand raised. Uh, yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, Catherine, but the committee has draft standing rules. Uh, uh, yes, we are waiting. And so next month we would adopt the standing rules, uh, hopefully. So going to be a long process now of doing standing rules. The, the committee is all ready to uh, present, I think, uh, at committee meeting and then at next month's meeting, the uh, proposed standing rules. So this is not going to delay us a long time. Thank you, Ren. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do we want to proceed to a vote on this? Just clean up? I don't see other hand. I don't see any other uh, comments. So, uh, all right. Sounds like it. And uh, does everybody understand when they vote what this would mean? A vote yes or a vote no? Catherine, do you wanna explain that? Yeah, so a vote yes would be, this now references the standing rules for voting procedure. A vote no would be that it references article five, section six vacancies for voting procedure, which is not included. There's no voting procedures included there now. So 
Okay. okay. Hang okay. on. Okay. Hang on. I've got, a, <laughs> I've got to copy something. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Um, does everyone understand the motion? I think so, Robin. Catherine, what do you vote? Yes, standing rules. Okay, hold on. Arthur? Yes. Robin? Uh, I'm going to abstain. Nick? Yes. Uh, Red? Yes. Okay. Fred? Yes. Right. Uh, Matt? Yes. Okay. Lee is excused. Susanna? Yes. Pa Paige? Yes. Great. Tess? Yes. Okay. Oops. Hang on. Hang on one sec. This damn cursor. Hang on. Okay. Uh, Kevin? Yes. And Sean? Yes. And Colby? Yes. And Jake is excused. So let me count here. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven yeses. And I think there should be twelve yeses. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I'm an abstain. Right. Aren't there thirteen people? Yeah. Uh, I have. I have one no. Wait. Sorry. Sorry, Tess. Your oh. your no is a yes. No, okay. I'm. No, Are you I, a no or a yes? I'm yes. Okay, mm -hmm. then that's the twelve. So it's twelve. Zero, zero one. one. Okay. Motion carries. Okay. Are there any other requests for changes to this bylaw draft before we proceed to a vote on the overall bylaw draft as amended? I don't see any big hands raised. So. All right. Um, well, Yes, Robin, you want to roll call this as a reminder? Nine yeses are required to pass this. Um, okay, motion C, approve the bylaws amendments red line for adoption by the GTLNC. Um, as amended. As amended, but can I ask you once again to wait? Uh, can I ask you again to please explain what a yes vote means and what a no vote means? A yes vote is to support the bylaws amendments draft that we have now made changes to. So it does not include the vacancy language anymore. It, it reverts it back to what is the current vacancy language. And it references the standing rules for how we'll establish the voting procedure. If you vote yes on this, you are supporting this draft as a whole. If you vote no on this, you are rejecting this draft as a whole. Okay. If you abstain, you are not <laughs> taking a position, but you still count as a number. Okay, so I'm going to start with Catherine. Yes. Arthur? No. Uh, uh, I'm, can I come back to this? My head is a little full from having to keep track of everything. Just, I'm gonna go back to me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Nick? Are you still yes. here, Nick? Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, Ren. Yes. Uh, Fred. Yes. Uh, Matt. 
I abstain. Abstain. Uh, Lee is excused. Susanna. Yes. Paige. Yes. Uh, Tess. Yes. Uh, Kevin. Abstain. Uh, Sean. That'd be yes. Uh, Jake is excused. Colby. Yes. And I'm going to be an abstain. So let me count this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine yeses. And I have one, one no. And I have one, two, three abstain. Motion carries. Nine, one, three. All right. Thank you all. Um, we will have some standing rules for you for your enjoyment. Um, Tess, I think you can take the share screen off at this point. Okay. Um, that was exciting. All right. And Colby, I'll coordinate with you with regard to submitting this. Um, I think you and Arthur need to sign some paperwork, if I recall. Catherine, can I be included in that, please? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. And we have more at GAC, right? Yes, we need to move back now to uh, executive. <laughs> so executive committee, Colby. Well, is, that, is, that, is that finished up? Uh, oh, yeah. GIC is yeah. done. We're done. For You're done? Okay. Thank you. We'll, we'll see you all next time. Thank you. Thank you all on. to the committee. <laughs> that I stood in First Tuesday in March, 6.30 p.m., March 1st, y'all. If you want to come chat standing rules. Thank you. All right. Executive committee will be quick. Um, again, a call for MPG applicants. I, I, I'm ringing this bell every week. Um, please, please. We have a deadline. I want my NPG. Um, <laughs> and we have a deadline. Uh, is it the 31st of March? What is the deadline? 31st, March? 31st of March. 31st. Yeah. 31st. Please bring them, bring them to me fast and furious. Uh, community goals. Uh, stakeholders that come at me and ask me um, to, to reiterate, reiterate this. Please bring me two or three, your homework assignment, everybody listening, your community goals for Greater Kluku Lake whether it's filling potholes or noise or lighting or whatever you want to see change. We're all here for a reason and probably two or three of them. I want every one of you to bring me at least one, email me at least one idea. Um, even if it's something we never heard of before, crazy, or what do you think it is, how, no matter how small it is, uh, please email me in the next seven days some, some goal you have. Uh, I know, of course, we're aware of homelessness. We're aware of crime. We're aware uh, of the big ones. Um, that we're working on, but if you, there's something else, uh, you know, of course you can say that too. You're welcome to, to bring up the old ones also, uh, but bring me your community goals because we only have in this administration, we really know that three formative months uh, to, to get things moving. It's gone by fast. Well, the first part went by very slowly and the second half is going very, by, by much faster. Well, I, I think the board is finally <laughs> sort of um, working together and we're getting some Stuff. We're, get, we're gaining momentum. So thank you all for working together. Well, I'm very happy with the board. I'm getting happier and happier with the board. And and, our, and, uh, and I think listening to our stakeholders is, is very important. Um, and uh, as we move forward to, uh, to elections this summer, I, uh, whoever is elected or me or someone else or the executive board, I implore you to, to listen to our stakeholders more and more. Uh, and I think that's helping to, to bridge um, the visions that we had earlier in this administration. And I look forward to the strengthening of those bridges. Um, anything else uh, from your tech board? Anyone else want to say something? You've got it. You've got okay. it. Let's move forward to Arthur Treasurer. You're on, Arthur. You okay. want me to read the motion? Yes, please read the motion. Sure. Motion B to approve the January 2022 MER and expenditures for reconciliation submission to the city clerk. Do I have a first? Ren. Thank you, Ren. Do, do I have a second? Paige. Paige, thank you, Paige. 
Okay. So we had finished December with $26,238. We had $122 of operating expenses. Those include $96 for Google and then $25.99 for MailChimp, leaving us with $26,116 at the end of January. Do you have any questions? Seeing and hearing. Some, some of that is earmarked for our NPC, right? Yes. We have 5,000, and then we have the uh, 2,000 for YMCA, right? We have to take out of that. What Can you give me a, a rough number of what we have left after we fulfill our NPG grants and and generally other running expenses you see? Okay. Forward? I can I'll take a note of that. And okay, you email me. Let me know. You yes. know what we have, the big picture. And I saw a hand raised, um, but we can get to get to that when you're ready. Oh, it went away. Okay. okay. Any other discussion? Can we take a vote? I'm going to read motion B to approve the January 2022 MER and expenditures for reconciliation submission to the city clerk. Uh, Catherine. Sorry. Yes. Uh, Arthur? Yes. I'm a yes. Robin? Nick? Yes. Ren? Yes. Fred? Yes. Matt? Yes. Lee is excused. Susanna? Yes. Paige? Yes. Tess? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Sean? Yes. Jake is excused. Colby? Yes. I have... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, mm -hmm. 11, 12, 13 yeses. So 13, zero, zero. Motion carries. Thanks, Arthur. Thank you, Arthur. Moving right along to planning land use with Ren and Fred. Oh, I apologize. I don't know if it's on the original agenda, but I, I, I'm making Fred, the co-chair. Yes, I'm here. Yeah. So he's okay. so, I see him right all right. Here. I just want to make sure you're you're listed, Fred. Yeah. Thank you very much. So, Ren and I are both going to speak tonight. Uh, we had a very good meeting last night. Um, very productive. I'm very happy how things went. Uh, just go really quick with the creation of the developer guidelines. Uh, we're going to hold us another special meeting on that to to further finalize and get that to you guys. Uh, second thing is the planning department changes on when the neighborhood council receives notice of applications for bird building permits. They want to shorten that time. We are against that. And we are going to try to keep it uh, the same thing. Basically, the packets that we get mailed to us, and they want to um, shorten the time that, that we get that. And we don't, we don't like that. So um, moving on, we have a project that 10,000 uh, 50 Toluca Lake Avenue. They're requesting uh, over height fence request. Um, that will come to a vote in one of our upcoming meetings when we get the planning packet from uh, the planning department. Uh, same thing, 10459 Camarillo. They also want to put an eight foot tall fence at the property line, practically right at the street of Camarillo. That's kind of concerning to a lot of people. We're going to take a vote on that upcoming meetings. Again, same thing with the mobile gas station on Riverside and Coinga. They want to put a car wash in the gas station. We had a good discussion on that last night Up for a vote. Uh, more Park in Vineland. There's a condo project there that we have ongoing discussion on. Same thing with the Mariota and Riverside uh, with the Gelson's Market. They want to get a liquor license. And I'm going to hand the last one off to Ren about the community plan, and he probably has some other things to add on to these other items. But so far, uh, so good. We're very pleased with our meeting and going forward, uh, very excited. So thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you, Fred. Uh, just on, on the community plan, uh, we're part of the uh, uh, South uh, West Valley Community Plan. There's three subsections. Uh, Toluca Lake, our greater Toluca Lake areas, and two of them. Uh, 
we're basically tracking and trying to uh, anticipate when the planning department is going to come to us with their draft plan. Uh, I talked to the planner, he's now saying uh, April or May, uh, when it arrives, uh, uh, we want to all, <laughs> hopefully everyone on the, on the council will jump in and see pieces of it that they're concerned about or that they want to have input on. So uh, we'll be watching for that. Uh, it keeps getting delayed, but when it arrives, we want to make sure that our community input isn't sacrificed uh, to catch up with the, the time frame that they started out with because I think we deserve to uh, have our input and, and uh, have a, a 10 year impact on this, uh, on the community. Um, other than that, just stay tuned. There's uh, projects going on and coming to us. And uh, once the planners are ready with their report, we'll come back with motions uh, either to oppose or support, but much more likely uh, support with understanding Standings of changes that we want to see made. So uh, stay tuned. Um, I have, I'm really sorry, guys. Sure. I was trying, this isn't planning related, this is bylaws related. I, I'd been trying to skim through the bylaws in a PDF form, and I missed two other places that reference the vacancies section. I thought there were more, and I couldn't find them when I was skimming through it but I found them and I don't know if our done rep is still on and can maybe tell Erica is still what on. We need to do in order to um, fix those uh, you know if, if we can just use the same um, the the change that was already agreed to because we were cleaning up the language to reference standing rules or, or if we need to reopen the entire bylaws thing and make more motions for changes to this draft. Eric, are you, are you uh, available? Yes, I'm here. And in fact, I've also asked Tom to provide some input as well, but just so we're clear, um, uh, Catherine, you're saying that further amendments may be needed on the bylaws because there were some sections that we didn't go over? No, so right now we had created a defined voting procedure in Article 5, Section 6 vacancies for the draft. Mm -hmm. That those changes and that voting procedure was rejected as a vote. We all took a vote and it was rejected. Um, right. So it no longer has a voting procedure in that um, section. So the places where it references the voting procedure defined in that section are rendered moot. So um, well, then, then this is, this, Catherine, this is Tom soon here. Then, then, it, then if that, the motion did not pass then then you i would then you would make the changes to the other parts of the bylaws that would be consistent with that change that didn't pass then. okay um so the here's but the overall motion did pass so the bylaw changes overall passed there was a section where we had made proposed some changes those proposals specifically in that section were rejected. The rest of the bylaws were passed. So you're saying that it's okay for us to update the bylaws, like the rest of the draft so that anywhere yes. that it references, the, okay. Yep. Okay. Um, I guess the one other thing is these other two are a little more complicated than the selection of officers. Mm -hmm. They are for the youth board member and for mm -hmm. committee chairs. Cause right mm -hmm. now, um, if you look on, um, I believe it is page. Um, so the youth board member is on page six toward the top. We have it stated that the youth board member shall be selected from eligible candidates by a majority vote of board members in accordance with the voting procedure defined in Article 5, Section 6 vacancies. 
So that would need to be changed to selected from or shall be approved I, or it would essentially have to revert back to the president nominates the youth board member. Um, and then on page 14 towards the bottom committee chairs um, shall be selected by the board at the annual meeting in accordance with the voting procedure. Mm -hmm. That one will need to be as defined in the standing rules. Okay, gotcha. does that sound right for everyone in order to not mess yeah, up yeah, the way that the vacancies thing was restored? Yeah, do, do, let's let's do this. Um, just just for the for the for the sake of the, the time here. Um, mm -hmm. and we haven't. First of all, board, thank you. That was a very great discussion. That's how you handled the bylaws with these pages. So props to everybody here, Catherine, Tess, and rest of the board and stakeholders. So my recommendation is that you already made the, approve the bylaws as is right now, and we still have a month and a half to. You know, if you wanted to bring him back for the for the changes, there's been a lot of changes, and I want to be, and I don't want to just. And it'll be great if um if you wanted to, Captain, send it to Erica and I, to, to give it a little look look through to review. You know, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe maybe we could just talk lot offline to. Yeah, maybe, that'd be great. Let's do let's do that, okay? And then um, so then we could we, we still have time, you know, until April the first. So if you're willing to, maybe we could do a offline meeting, but first let, let us send, it, send us over, you know, and then we'll look at some components of it where we, we, we need to pull in maybe the the, the, the city attorney for just, 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 just another look over too. But I, I would, that's, that's my recommendation before we get in, because uh, you, 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 you did approve that already, and then we could help you with uh, more of the details of this. Okay. I think Thank Tessa, you. I'll, I think that's a I'll, I'll send you an email. Um, yeah, send it to and, Erica and myself, and that'd be that'd be great. And can you please Thank include you so me uh, in in all of that, Catherine? I'd appreciate it. And um, you referred to this earlier, Catherine, and then we sort of glossed over it because we got caught up in something else. I had um, made some changes to the well. I had I had uh, included. In, uh, language in the red line that um, Catherine and I, and I did not agree on. And it, it was clarifying. Tess, it's not that we didn't agree on it. It's that we hadn't discussed this at governmental okay. affairs. All right. Well, I support you in that language. Okay, good. Thank you. So at what point do we insert that language? We would have done that during the bylaws discussion that okay. we had. All right. But we, it was referenced but then we jumped to something else so do we want to put shall we discuss that now or how would you like to handle that let's discuss it with thomas to see if it's even necessary to be included um yeah so you have you have a you still have one more meeting to i think i think you're almost there right so then let's if we need to have a separate I mean, if, you know if you if the board wants to agenda this at another you know, the, the March meeting that we can, you know. Okay. Mm -hmm. that's right. Well, so can I clarify that uh, the two articles that Catherine is referring to, the uh, picking of the committee chairs and the youth board seat, uh, the language, you know, that we passed, uh, the one where we said the president was going to, uh, let me see if I can word this properly, the president <laughs> would make the selection of those two other items? No, so the president is now currently, and now since the bylaws don't include the other proposed changes, but currently yeah. a vacancy on the governing board shall be filled by a stakeholder who satisfies the eligibility requirements for holding the vacated board seat. It does not discuss anything about committee chairs. Okay. In that section. Uh, no, I'm referring to you brought up the committee chairs are selected by the president and the youth board seat is selected. No, by the, the, the way that the bylaws that we just passed are the committee chairs are selected by a vote at the annual meeting from amongst candidates. Um, that's what we put in the bylaws and that's separate from the vacancy section, but it referenced the voting procedure of the vacancy section. 
So if you go to page 13, or sorry, 14, and scroll it, it, down it, to- it, The rest of the board that is listening, is that your understanding? Am I the only one who's confused? I'm confused. I, I thought the language reverted- The language the restored the vacancy language. section, which only references a vacancy on the governing board not a vacancy of an officer position or a committee chair position. Okay, that was not my understanding. It, it, maybe I'm- That I'm, is our bylaws language right now. Okay, okay, I just- So, so if somebody leaves the, the board, then it works the way it did before. Where right. The president nominates. Yes. And the board votes. Okay, so yes. none of that has changed. That hasn't changed. Okay. What about the youth member? That's that's where we need to clean something up because right now it says the youth member would be selected from amongst eligible candidates by the board. And so we need to fix that language to restore it back to, because that would be a vacancy on the governing board. Um, the president would nominate an individual and by simple majority, um, so, so basically, rather than it saying eligible candidates, um, it would be that the board would confirm or reject a nominee in accordance with the vacancy section. Which is different than the way it was, like when I, I, brought, I nominated Jake Tiddick. That's a different process. Well, I, I mean... And then, and then the board... Right. The, the proposal, the proposal was the youth board member will be selected from eligible candidates, but since we've rejected that a, at a, that a vacancy on the governing board is selected from eligible candidates, I mean, I guess we could leave that in there. Um, Thomas, what or, are you talking about this? Yeah, the board, I mean, Look, I think right now I would I would still the, the board has already taken you know action to to approve this. I mean, once again, I, I still think there's time to for, for deeper dive review on this. You know, I'm hearing this, and that's what I look at the look at this a little deeper. You know, so you're saying we should bring this vote on, on this on this particular part at the next board general board meeting. Yeah, but this, I think we should have a special meeting, Colby. I don't think we should leave it until the end of March in case there are other issues that need that's to be That's a great, that's a, that's a good, actually, this, this, that, I think that's a good recommendation, actually. I think that if we do just have a separate meeting, because you, you'll, because we'll, you'll turn it to us on April 1st. I didn't 1st. Know, yeah. Excuse me? Uh, uh, I, I, yeah, I'll mute him. Um, okay. So let's do this. Okay, let's let's. I think I think the next action steps though is that in all is that I'll like we'll we'll meet with Catherine and and Tess, mm -hmm. and then we'll review it. And if we have other recommendations or find some yellow you know other things that we need to change and clarifications, and then then we could decide whether or not to um, have a special meeting or if it's short enough, then bring it to the March board meeting. That's what I would do. Thanks, Thomas. Okay. I think, but the board's already kind of voted on this, and Catherine, we could test, we could work out the the, the details on this on the side and bring it back to the board. Yeah, let's do that, and then we'll okay. put the we'll 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 deal with the clarifying language. Then sounds yeah, good. and then and if we need a special meeting, then that's a good recommendation. Then we'll do that. Good. Okay. All right. All right. And Colby, thank you for bumping the bylaws discussion up in the agenda. Well, it's just we get decision fatigue, and it's, it's, it's important decisions to make. Um, okay, we got We have to move on. We got to keep this. Keep this not even keel. Uh, we okay. were at public oh, safety. I'm sorry, Robin. We're going on to public safety. Was Ren oh, finished? Are we done? I don't know if we're done with Plum yet. Are we done with Plum, Ren? Yes. Okay, we're done with that. Let's move on to public safety. Uh, Robin, or, or, um, take it away, Robin. Okay. So at our public safety meeting, again, um, the very sad news of um, Jay Goldberg. We will miss him at our meetings. He had dropped off for this particular meeting, the last one, um, obviously now we know why, but um, uh, we will miss him and his input because he spoke at the January meeting. He was e extremely knowledgeable. Um, so uh, one of the suggestions, uh, you know, we are really trying to focus in on safety and um, uh, there are, 
Oh, Lee just joined us. He joined about 10 minutes ago. Okay, well, let me add that to my notes about 10 minutes ago, which would about be my 20. My battery is about to die, so I'm going to stay oh. with you as long as I can. <laughs> okay, thank, thanks, Lee. Okay, join at 920. Um, so um, one of the biggest problems in uh, the neighborhood is how dark Toluca Lake is. And a lot of it is just because we're an old community at this point, we're almost hundred years old. And um, so lighting is a very big issue. So one of the things that we were suggesting is to add more lighting. And um, uh, there's a woman who's one of the watch captains who suggested that we don't even need to go through neighborhood council to get more lighting, that you just contact your local DWP. And if you have a poll, uh, they will come and uh, install lighting. I need to find out some more information about that, but it sounded very intriguing that we could actually get the city to come in and uh, hang some more lighting for us. But lighting is very important. And then the other issue was uh, a safety vest. Um, I walk at night uh, with a friend and she showed up one night with a lighted vest that she got on Amazon for $14. And when we were walking around the neighborhood, we actually had people stop us and ask us where we got them and it, how great it was that they could see us because you can make them flash or just stay uh, um, not flashing. And um, so I was suggesting that maybe at some point, if we have some money left over, um, this is something that we could maybe purchase through some vendor and maybe put the GTLNC logo on it and maybe give them out at a local event that we might have. So the safety vests are pretty cheap and it's a great way to be seen at night. A quick question uh, while we're on that. Uh, Thomas or Erica, when I talked to Gibson about this vest idea last week, he said that we, I just wanna make sure, are we required, and I'm happy to do it, but required to have the GTLNC logo on any kind of materials like this that we give out to the public as a part of outreach? Yes, you would need to have your logo. You know that that shows that your it's endorsement from your um, from your from your council. Just okay, great. We're we'll gonna make sure we get those custom made. Okay, so we, it was it was just an idea. We thought it was kind of a kind of a a, a really smart idea and pretty pretty reasonable if we can get them uh, done for us. You know, not going through Amazon, but maybe a, a manufacturer. Yeah, we yeah, just, just, we yeah, just be stuff. careful. If, if you don't have your, you know, per the, the city uh, city clerk funding guidelines is that if you don't have your logo on it, it's like a gifting of a public, you know, using gifting public funds, right? I think they stopped as a funny thing though, is that, you know, in the past neighbor councils, they want to give, our give, give away turkeys and turkey giveaways. And I've been with a neighbor council, you stick their logo on a turkey and you give it away, you know, but then right. I, think, I think they changed that policy. But yeah, generally speaking, um, if you have your logo on your items, it's deemed as outreach and it's promoting your neighbor council. So that's the safe way to go. And we could we could put a sticker theoretically on it, right? It wouldn't have to be embroidered. Oh, yeah. it, it can just be a sticker that we have. If, if worse comes to worse, you know. Right, right, it, right. It, it well, that's something it. that identifies that this is a GTLNC sponsored, you know. Okay. That's a great Thank idea, Colby. Right, if I could just, I'm sorry, this is Erica. If I could just add, I would just emphasize, you know, really going, looking through those requirements from the funding. Um, department only because I have been in situations where NCs have purchased banners and because, you know, the city logo uh, doesn't meet the, the size of what is required to be put on that product, it can be denied. So the last thing that I would want is for you all to make these purchases at the logos and then it not being able to get distributed due to some lack of requirement. Okay. Thank you, Erica. I, I, right now, it's just a discussion. We're not, we're not, we haven't delved into it quite yet, but it was just a suggestion. Yeah. Um, the homicide on Sarah and Vineland and the Mrs. Robinson uh, update, both of those, I think Officer Delbar mentioned about Mrs. Robinson, the Sarah Vineland update uh, test, you said you there was a detective, there was an arrest. Um, so we kind of covered that. Did you have anything else you wanted to add to that, Tess? Um, no, just that we're very sorry about the loss of our neighbor. And yes, Detective Haggis is on it. Um, I met with Captain Mohammadi um, 
the gang unit supervisor and Curtis Del Bar a couple of weeks ago. And there are no further updates other than that a male suspect has been arrested. And that's it on that. Great. Thank you. And Tess, thank you for all that you did in your area regarding this. Um, the homeless count is coming up. I forget the date. I think it's the 22nd. But I just got an email. Tess, you know what that one is? I, I look at it right now. I think it's the okay. 22nd. And uh, Toluca Lake Mag yeah. Mag what is it? It's the 22nd. It is, okay. And it's, uh, they're, they're going to meet at uh, Harmony Church and go out from there, but you, of course, have to sign up ahead of time. Yeah, you have to sign That's up okay. to be part of it. And the, uh, the URL to sign up is theycountwillyou.org. Will, Y-O-U dot O-R-G. Thank you, Tess. Um, they count will you dot, okay. Um, and like I said, uh, to look like magazine was looking for photos from that event, which I'm not really sure for privacy reasons, maybe just of the volunteers, maybe that's what they want. But, um, you know, we don't want, <laughs> we don't want uh, <laughs> pictures of the homeless. We just want <laughs> pictures of maybe the volunteers who came to help. Um, and then the homeless service guide uh, that was created by Louis Oliart for Studio City. Uh, outreach has now uh, maybe taken this project on. So we're gonna forward this on to public safety. And that's really it for public safety, Colby, unless there's anything else. Yeah, I, uh, Tess, any any word on, I know you and I talked, we walked west to Luke Lake a few weeks ago. Any word, any, any of our problems with the, um, the, the halfway drug house and or the party houses? Um, no, but we do have a new development and we hosted a, the West Toluca Lake Residents Association hosted a very successful cleanup on Saturday, 30 huge bags of trash. Um, and, oh. and when I, there were the, the city of LA and Lhasa was clearing out or cleaning up some homeless encampments on Moore Park and the 101. And it's not clear to me whether they were simply cleaning or removing, but what has happened is a number of the people who were living under the bridge have now moved into the no man's, and, no man's land area on the embankment between the 134 and the 170 underpass on Riverside. So, at the same time that uh, our residents association was clearing trash, uh, a whole new contingent of folks moved in. So I am working with uh, a, another homeowners association president on that. And we're looking to uh, get some no loitering uh, signs or uh, ordinances enforced and get these people the help that they need. Uh, there's, it, what it underscores to me is that when there's a political will to get something done, that it can be done. Um, but we have a whole new crop of uh, residents in West Toluca Lake now. So to be continued. But it, I know, but it, it really the, uh, tests it's, is we're not dealing with the actual issue of mental health again and there's nothing to really do with them and I, I, this is the thing that we come back to is and until we build those four thousand bed units until we have a serious mental health and drug addiction wing and we start enforcing laws again and putting people into those instead of prisons we're going to have this whack-a-mole thing i agree nick so. I, I totally agree and i plan to reach out to the new um a county supervisor representative yeah. who came to our last meeting and if you like you should be part of that meeting i will <laughs> I will. That is definitely something that I all right, care I'll get that. About. I'll get that scheduled. Let's do that. Great. All right. Thank you Thanks, all. Uh, Thank Colby, you. on to outreach. Yes, outreach. Okay. Um, we have a couple of projects in the works. Um, we are uh, working on a promotional sticker that would um, just try to drive folks to the website and the newsletter sign up. Um, I have a couple of quotes coming in for that, and we will hopefully have a couple of funding motions before the board um, for next month's meeting. Um, we are also, as Robin mentioned, working on a homeless, uh, adapting a, a homeless outreach guide. Um, the one from Studio City is 
pretty comprehensive. So we are going to be borrowing from that. Tess was really helpful in getting us the kind of working files for that so that we can make um, some minor updates to it. And we'll be sharing that um, with the group once the revisions are made as well. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to get that up and running and then distributed. Um, if people have not seen the Studio City one that Colby shared, it, it uh, is just a helpful resource guide that lets people know, um, you know, which boundary areas, what numbers to call based on certain, um, certain areas and, and what proactive steps you can take, um, you know, depending on the circumstances. So just to give people a little bit more information about the proper way to respond when they do um, come across, you know, homeless people and encampments um, and who the right person is to contact to see about getting, getting those people help. Um, and that's it for outreach. Also, I uh, just, to, you know, the website is about outreach and I, I've been working on the city and bringing them together with, we have a new representative at the city clerk's office for funding. Mariel is her name and, and she's pretty responsive so far. Um, she reached out to TYS last week in the email. Um, I followed up with TYS today. Uh, the city needs, amongst other things it needs, TYS is business tax certificate uh, and that's and so I, I asked where that was I called TYS today and TYS paid their business taxes but hasn't they haven't received the tax certificate and that tax certificate goes in the bundle which is submitted to the city clerk's office to get TYS paid so TYS now the ball is in their court to get the, the tax certificate that they paid for but haven't received the certificate <laughs> um, so I had a conversation today with Tim the head of TYS and he's working on getting that business tax certificate um, to the city um, that will then, as the dominoes fall, get our website uh, to where it needs to be. So I just want to give you guys an update. Colby, I was getting copied on a bunch of emails from the city uh, funding clerk's office that looked like they were emails confirming that a payment was being issued. Was that not related? No, I didn't. I didn't get. No, I didn't see those emails. I didn't get that email. Okay, uh, I, I'll send you. How long you, ago was this? Was this last week? It was throughout the past. Yeah, I would say like six days. They came through at a bunch, uh, a bunch of different. Oh, that yeah, that was a different thing. This is a this is where TYS is still hung up with the, the business tax certificate as as, as far as um, at two o'clock today when I had a conversation with TYS. Okay. Got is there it. any chance, Paige, of getting us business cards? I've had some stakeholders say, "Hey, I'd love your card so I can get in touch with you." when I talked to them about local issues and I just don't have them. So I was curious if we could get some to hook in. Uh, I mean, I think we could discuss that and see how much it would cost and then it would be a funding motion. Um, you know, we can certainly discuss that at the next outreach committee. I would say the only other um, thing for the members of the public that are on the call, we would love to have some more participation on the outreach committee. Um, the other main priority is going to be kind of recruitment, just getting more people involved so that we can do more uh, physical outreach. Um, things like having people at the farmer's market, places like that. So, I mean, to Nick's point, having something to hand out, although it does sound like we have some GTLNC merch for lack of a better term available for those purposes um but i mean if business cards are something that we want to explore you know i would suggest you kind of come to the next meeting we could put it on the agenda and talk about it i just don't think they're that expensive and i think we can get them for like 20 dollars a person or something i think it'd be worth it cool. yeah okay like great we've had them in the past and um we just haven't done it this year because of covid and we haven't had any in person but but yeah it, it is nice having this card I see uh, Jonathan Gregory has his hands up. Hi, Jonathan. Thank you. I just shortly wanted to mention when I'm hopeful that whenever this board does anything re uh, regarding homelessness, that it meets two tests. One is to exercise the sensitivity of the suffering. And also the more difficult task is never to normalize that suffering in our streets, that just as a couple of board members just mentioned, hospitals, psychiatric wards, reentry centers are an absolute requirement that we need in LA to make this end. So never normalize it. Thank you. Thanks, Jonathan. Any other comments from stakeholders or board members? Oh, I see. Hi, John. Go ahead. Hey, Paige. So, Paige, are you the uh, outreach uh, chair? Yes. 
All right, very cool. Yeah, just want to just uh, just connect with the uh, with you, um, just letting you know that uh, in March through June, I know it sounds kind of weird talking about it so early, but you know, elections for the 2023 elections are, you know, and then and it's coming up. Uh, we'll be sending out to you our elections report from the past election cycle, the supplemental what we did, but also what we want to we'll be reaching out to. Um, each each board's community outreach chairs and out committees outreach committees with chairs to maybe strategize and work with you on you know engagement for for the upcoming elections, but just outreach in general. So just to be be stay tuned. So March in right. through June, uh, I think Erica will be reaching out to you. Okay, Thank sounds you. good. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. And Paige, we have uh, Tess Taylor. Uh, yeah, Colby, I just want to thank you for unraveling the great mystery of TYS because you know this getting to the bottom of fixing our website has been ongoing for a year. So well done. And hopefully this means with you and Paige at the wheel, we're going to get the website updated and easier for people to use. Thank you. Thanks, Tess. Uh, Tommy, you have your hand up again? Let me see. Maybe that was a mistake. Maybe he just didn't put it down. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we sorry. That's that's yeah. We put it down. We need to move okay. on to environmental. Catherine, are you still there? Lord, yeah, I am. All right. Um, we ended up not having a meeting this month because we didn't have enough attendees. So we're going to go ahead and try to meet in March. That would be Tuesday, March eighth at six p.m. love to have anyone join great okay and what did i miss is that your treasurer you that's presented. it that's you got it all because you did the outreach environmental governmental yeah okay now we have new business new business i just i'm working on uh clarifying an npg from rio vista uh school and they, they sent one over there's a few little details that need to clarify like signatures and dates and things that things that have to be dotted um and Catherine will help me that with that as well and again i'm you know send me your ideas send me your npgs um any other new business the board anything from the stakeholders want to bring something up last minute it's been a late night all right, our next meeting is Tuesday, March 15, 2022 at 7 p.m. Thank you all for your patience and your time, and we appreciate you all. Thank you, and have a wonderful rest of the week. 9.48 p.m. Thank night. you, everybody, for your patience. Bye-bye. Thank you so Good much. Night. Thank you. Good night.